Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream where there's members only that can be in the chat room. Everybody else and members and subscribers and new people, you can watch the live stream. But members with the icon are the only ones that can be in the chat room here tonight. But on Monday and Friday nights, everybody can be in the chat room. And tonight, it's the global meltdown begins. Now, I know you guys have heard about this for the last year, but not for me. But I'm just using that as a title tonight to get your minds right. Is this the global meltdown that's beginning? You're going to have to protect yourself And that's right. They don't like talking about it, but let's talk about it. Guns, grub, and without any money, you know what turns next. Bad news from there. You're going to need some finances. And so therefore, you got to set yourself up just in case you have cut off. You have been cut off from the bank. So we're going to talk about this tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned and welcome. Stop struggling now. Gear. Check. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, please share the videos. We do many different types of videos. We're just not with one genre. We're with several. And all I'm trying to do is the channel is called Stop Struggling Now because that's the objective to help you stop struggling from all facets. It's just just it's not always about money. That's right. There's other things beside money, ladies and gentlemen, that you're going to have to stop struggling from just in case things hit the fan. The global meltdown does occur. And even if it doesn't, you still need to protect yourself. That's right. And before we get into this, please smash the like button. That's so the YouTube guys know that we're here and everybody else. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what we're talking about during this live stream. But don't forget to check out some of the videos after this live stream. Let's see who's in the house tonight. Auntie Val is here. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream where it's members only with the icon that could be in the chat room. And her nickname and deservedly so, Professor Auntie Val. And she brings her tagline here. Good evening, fam. And she shows it with the heart, with the support with the strength ladies and gentlemen so thank you so much sorry no notification or trailer guess youtube doesn't like me today thank you so much for letting me know that's right see how they do us here ladies and gentlemen see this is what i'm saying you just never know look who else is in the house tonight laverne Penix is here welcome to the ssn nation wednesday night live stream and he has the icon next to his name as well and his AKA Mr. Cool is in the house and he brings his tag tagline. Hello, SSN Nation. I hope all is doing well. Let's make some money. I received a notification in the trailer. That's good news. At least one person has received that YouTube notification and trailer. Victor Marrero is here. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream where it's members only with the icon that can be in the chat room. He brings one of two taglines. This one is, hello all, let's do this. That's right. We're going to make it happen. Now, let's get into it and got the YouTube notification and trailer. Thank you so much. That's two people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know how we do this. Stop struggling now. SSN Nation, the no guru zone. That's right, the SSN University. Now, let's talk about this global meltdown. What does a global meltdown look like? Does it look like the stock market dropped 1,000, the Dow Jones dropped 1,200 points? 
Not quite, ladies and gentlemen. That doesn't affect hardly anyone, although everyone who's invested in the stock market may be affected in one way or another, but you don't have to sell. That doesn't stop you from eating, right? That doesn't stop you from having the clothes out of your closet on your back. That doesn't stop you from hardly anything, whatever happens with the stock market. So that's the global meltdown. I'm sorry. That's not what we're talking about here. If stock market goes to zero. Who cares? I mean, I do care, but what I'm trying to say is the top 10 percenters own 89% of it. These guys will be jumping out of windows, all right? All I'm saying, but here's the thing. For ordinary citizens, us OCs, we have to look at other things because we don't get to go fire up the jet, right? We don't get to go fire up the yacht so we can leave and go to the safe haven destinations. We're ordinary citizens. So if your electricity is turned off, I don't mean you're specifically at your house. I'm talking about the grid goes down and the grid doesn't come back up for not just one day, not just one week. How about a month? The grid doesn't come back up. That's right, America. Don't think you're above this because you already know in Texas last year, people were freezing. People died because they froze because their grid wasn't up for a week. These are some of the things that you should be thinking about. And that's why tonight global meltdown begins, how to protect yourself. Let's just get things out the way because I know this isn't a gun channel, but all I'm going to say is, ladies and gentlemen, you need protections. I don't even care if it's a bow and arrow, but the point of the matter is you got to get weaponry of some sort. You good with knives, something. I don't really care what it is, but you're going to have to get something to protect yourself just in case it's not that you plan on using it it's just in case and whenever there's an economic downturn you know what's needed people are going to possibly bust in your place because they know you have something so therefore it's more of protection it's not more of you need it's just protection so let's just get that out the way straight up everybody knows you need guns all right or you need bow and arrows or i don't really care what you get you need something right so force that can protect you from not hand to hand, meaning the person is away from you and they're coming towards you. You don't want to do hand to hand. That brings on a whole nother scenario, especially if there's more than one individual. So when meltdowns begin, you find yourself with groups of people that are coming for something that they don't have. And that's the first line of defense. That's why you're going to have to protect yourself. And that's why. Isn't it funny? That's why gun stocks and prepper type stocks may, amazingly stay about the same and the prices generally stay the same and go up a little bit. And whenever there is an economic crisis or global meltdown, guess what sales happen? First on the list, guns. And good thing you live in America, all right? Because most countries, you can't just go get guns off the shelf. All right, just keep things in perspective. Now, let's get into something else, shall we? Vanessa Comagate is here. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream. Members only that can be in the chat room. So therefore she has the icon next to her name. And hey boss and SSN fam got the notification. That's good to hear. At least we have three people that received the notification. They left out the professor today and Vanessa Comagate with the seamless genius. All right, I'll go with that. Not, I, I have no problem. <laughs> I'll go with the evil genius for Elon Musk, all right? Now, again, we got the gun situation handled. Don't be out here caught short, ladies and gentlemen. Just This isn't all about economics out here, all right? Because it also depends on what you may have in your garage, what you may have in your car, what you may have in your house. So you're going to have to figure out how to protect yourself. And that's number one. Grub. You know what grub means. That means some food, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have to have some food storage. It's pretty simple. In fact, let me do something so you guys understand what I'm talking about here. Because this all ends up the same way. This is prepper stacking. Where's Yankee stacking when I need them? This is prepper stacking, except we're not buying gold and silver, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right. We're not buying that. This is prepper stacking the other way. All right. Because I'm acting like we're in America and you guys have seen how American citizens and people around the world act in a crisis. All of a sudden, just like right now, when there was COVID, people, even to this day in certain cities, people are just showing up 10 people, 20 people deep and just robbing stores. All right. That should give you an understanding of what's going on. All right. So keep that in perspective. Do not sit around here acting like this is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. It is not. America is not the safest country on the planet. America's not even in the top 10, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I hate to burst your bubble. This is not the safest place in the world. It's far from it. There's a lot of other places before you get to the United States on the safety meter. All right. So think about that. All I'm saying, I get a little bit excited because some people think they're the best of the baddest and all this. But in reality, America, and as far as killings and as far as bad things happening to people, we're not even in the top 20 on the safety list. That should scare you. All right. So wake up right now, because whenever people can't get food, when they can't protect themselves, when they're freezing because it's winter time. What do you think is going to happen? All right. Just think about it. All the homeless people that are already out there right now. Generally, homeless people are relatively, you know, they hang out amongst themselves for the most part. But when things turn a different way where people have to protect themselves and get something to eat and and then they get three, four, five, six people, you know what's coming. All right. Here's what I'm going to show you right now. Let's talk about ordinary survival. We're going to get around to, you know, you need finance, right? You know, you're going to have to have money sooner or later if things hit the fan. So we'll get to that in a second. But I want to put this up on the screen so you guys can see this here. All right. Look at this. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. You're fragile. You're a fragile human being. Very fragile. Three minutes without oxygen maybe a little more that's it so three hours without shelter and what they mean by that is if it gets cold out and you don't have any shelter it's going to be a bad thing all right three days ladies and gentlemen without water so you know while you're running around taking water for granted there's some countries right now who are, well, I'll just say, who has aquifers. United States has aquifers. This is true, but the billionaires bought these aquifers. They can turn them off anytime if they really wanted to. There's other countries that you may not like, like Iran. They have water everywhere. Unbelievable. Whoever has water could turn into a superpower later because human beings, three days of zero water, you have problems. Your organs start shutting down one by one because your body starts preserving itself and says, what can we function with without water? So that's how your body reacts. So it's a slow death. If you go to day four, day five, all of a sudden, it's not going to be very, very good for you. So therefore, you're going to have to stash some water away. So you take it for granted right now. But every now and then, you know, they have those 199, 249, 24 packs, 40 packs, whatever. Every now and then you might want to store some, get an extra one and put it in the storage bin because you never know what the grid, the electrical grid is going to do. You never know what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, if there's a true financial crisis, never mind any other type of meltdowns where there's no groceries at the store. You can't just go get it. So that's why the grub portion, we might have to start talking about some some uh, four week survival kits and you can create those yourself. Now, three weeks without food. OK. Three weeks is short. Especially if. There's no electricity. So therefore, if there's no electricity, we got to start talking about other survival, right? We have to have some sort of cooking. Everybody has pots and pans. That's easy enough to find. 
What's not easy enough to find is something to heat something up with. We need natural gas or propane. You better have something. Wood, well, all of these things you have to resupply. So therefore, you're going to need some of that too. All right. So hopefully uh, we're talking, I'm talking about this tonight. I had to bring this out because this global meltdown could happen in an instant. Just what happened this yesterday with the markets. This is how quickly things can turn. All right. We went backwards yesterday with the stock market. All the gains we had for the three previous days meant nothing with yesterday's bloodbath. I told myself, self, this is bad. <laughs> exactly. LOL. Exactly. This is what I've been trying to say. You guys know nobody else is out here. I'm still touting it. Nobody else is aching this to say 1929. This is where we're at right now. Notice how the stock market goes up for green days for like three, four days, two, three days. Then all of a sudden it drops more than the gains. It just keeps going down a little, down a little, just enough so it doesn't spook people entirely. But you do have these big drops. So again, I always point out that 1929 stock market and, and 1930. And this is what it looks like. The straight up a few days just to get people feeling a little bit comfortable. And then all of a sudden it goes down a little bit. Then it goes up again a little. Then it drops like it did yesterday. And then they're saying this hasn't happened since uh, last year, I believe, July. And I'm like, exactly, because it's so gradual. And then they have these big drops. Then you forget about those big drops as months go by. But once you span out and look at the charts, you're like, wait a minute. This looks just like 1929, 1930 all over again. Except this time, this isn't the beginning of the modern monetary system. This time, they've already pumped up the markets. Can you imagine in 1929 if there were negative $30 trillion in debt? What would have happened? Sheesh. That's where we're at right now, ladies and gentlemen. They have so much money out there in the money supply that this, if things go way wacky, this is going to be bad. So these little 1,200 point loss, everybody just shrugged it off, right? Today they were up again by one, well, not 1%, but a little bit. But it's always interesting how they just shrug it off and be like, oh, don't worry about it. Just dollar cost average, buy some more. Don't worry about it. Meanwhile, in a week, the Federal Reserve is going to increase the interest rates. So therefore, all those guys who borrowed money to buy back their shares of stock, they're going to have a higher IOU. And whenever that 1% kicks in for buying back stocks and when people are borrowing against their assets, again, this is not going to be bad. All-time record high foreclosures are coming out. Three, four million foreclosures have started in the United States. It's all going bad. They're starting to restrict credit. Banks already have started taking people's money or just basically they already took the money. They're just saying, I'm sorry, we're not going to give it to you. Things have already started. It's just not, let's just say there's 300 million people, what, 200 million people that generally work doing something. It just hasn't happened where 50 to 60 million people all of a sudden went to the bank and was like, I can't get money out. That hasn't happened yet. It's only happening in small pockets where it's like 5,000, 3,000, 10,000 people. And on the overall scheme of things, it's quiet, still quiet. Wait till all of a sudden it's millions, like it's 1989 all over again with the savings and loan debacle. All right. So just think about it, ladies and gentlemen. So get your guns, get your grub. Now we'll get into a little bit of financing. And some of you may say, Eric, where am I going to get some? Of, okay, look, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go show something. Some of you might not figure out the grub part. The grub part means staples such as, you know, beans and rice. Those are generally inexpensive and they store well, right? Um, water, bottled, canned goods, those all store well. So these would be things that you can store, but how many things can you store, like set it and forget it? That's the question. So, you know, you on a can, it says, okay, goodbye, uh, January 2022, let's say. But if something hits the fan in 2023 and it says January 2022, 
Are you going to open up that can and eat it? Well, some people will, some people won't. All I'm saying though is maybe you want to think about prepper food or prepper packs that last for years and all you need is water. So here's the thumbnail. Let me give you this right here. How about 15 gallons of water? How about that? Keep 15 gallons of water on standby as a general rule, right? And you're going, okay, Eric, I get you 15 gallons. The reason why is because if you're going to do prepper situations, then here, I'll give you an example. I'll go to Patriot, right? Let's go to see Patriot. Let me see. Uh, four Patriots. That's a four Patriots works. Um, here goes. I'm not, okay. I'm not uh, promoting any particular brand. All right. This is just an example. So look at this. This is $247 and it comes in a tub. So if you want to go this route, you can go with companies that already have it where it's in a tub or already comes in packs without you having to do anything. Now, what's a little deceiving is the fact that those packs that they have is generally for one person. So when it says four week supply, that's not for two people. So therefore, I put in the My Patriot Supply. The other one would be $500 for two people. This one would be $600 for two people. So you can go the cheapy, which isn't really cheap. You can go this route where these are already packaged. You need water. And then therefore, you got to heat it up. So therefore, you have the propane. You have whatever you're going to use, right? But these packages last 20 years, 25 years. So now it's more of you have it, you're sitting there, you never have to worry about when electricity goes out or anything bad happens like that. And you have the other items like a generator maybe or something else where you're sitting there going, okay, if things happen, that's uh, where we're gonna be ready, all right? So here we go. I'm gonna keep talking. Let's go check this, yep. Do it every year for hurricane season. So no difference for me. Exactly, Professor Auntie Val. She knows what I'm talking about. You know, when them hurricanes are bearing down and all of a sudden they're boarding up homes and then everybody's at the grocery store grabbing up the water and any staples that they can use that are dry goods all gone off the shelf generally. So you don't want to wait. And then they up the price for you because there's demand. Price gouging. So all of that, for people that live in the hurricane zones, they're generally um, sort of preppers in the first place. Maybe not for a month or two, but they generally have supplies on hand because things bad. Good word. Always keep extra water no matter what. Exactly, Vanessa Comagate, because you can actually survive. Victor Marrero, on top of that, the U.S. railroad workers' upcoming strike will be a disaster to our supply chain. You're not lying. New negotiation between management and unions are at an impasse. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in trouble. Exactly, Victor Marrero. He's saying it exactly like it looks. Don't play like this is Wizard of Oz, ladies and gentlemen. Things are going bad. I mean, there's a potential for levers to fall. Now, I suspect that the union and 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 the railway workers and the uh, railroad railroads railways i assume that they're gonna i don't see how they're gonna have this disaster happen but that doesn't mean anything because this is easily a situation where all of a sudden first of all the workers know that they have them over a barrel if all the workers walk off that means what victor morrell is talking about supply chain issues who knows how long that's going to be that would be terrible so it's almost like the the actual companies, they're going to say, OK, we'll just get scabs. We'll just get somebody else to come in here and we'll pay them a little bit less. So that's the balancing act that goes on. But for all intents and purposes, that little balancing act, you never know what's going to happen. And if this goes the other way, now you're going to have a supply chain issue because railroads and truckers are the lifeline of products on your shelf. That's just two parts of an ecosystem that is vast. 
Because when you have boats not being able to come in, not being able to cross any of the canals, when you have anything held up, that affects everything else. They don't run like a well-oiled machine. So again, you can see exactly what the meltdown is looking like. And this is why you need to make sure that you get protection. Make sure you go down and get some things right now so you have at least a few weeks supply. This could easily turn like that toilet paper situation, except it won't be toilet paper. It could be water. It could be meat. It could be vegetables. All of that could be short if this goes bad. And this is only the beginning because other people are going to start coming up with their own demands from the workforce. So he's exactly right to say this. All right, Victor Marrero, my parents have a four to six month supply of basic items, including water, food, and two independent generators. Exactly. They survived Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. They spent seven months without power. Good God. Others spent over one year. There we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly the point. And there's people even to this day that do not have power back to their homes in Puerto Rico, in case you don't know. That's right, a U.S. territory, no less. Elon Musk even actually put up some grids for solar panels to help people because the United States government was like, ah, ah, yeah, you live on an island. You know there's hurricanes. Ah, we'll come over there and help you out when we get around to it. Or maybe not at all, but we're going to pay billions of dollars to some contractors to come over there and act like they're doing something. But they're not going to get everybody. This is exactly the point, Victor Morrell. Thank you so much for bringing that up. You see this right here, ladies and gentlemen? American territory. Now, don't believe that if something happened in Florida, Alabama, California, New York, don't believe these guys are going to be rushing down there. SEMA, SEMA uh, mobile homes sitting there that can't be used. Yeah, you don't want to rely on the government, all right? You don't know what's going to happen. And luckily, they were very well prepared with four to six months because they spent seven months without power. Can you imagine? And at least they had generators. So that's another item to tick off on your box, all right? But then if you have a generator, how's it going to be powered, right? Gas. So now you have to have gas somewhere just in case the gas pumps don't work. This starts getting pretty vast. And therefore, this is why if there's a disaster or global meltdown begins, this is why all the supplies are gone because you have thousands of people grabbing up only supplies enough. Let's say 4,000 people looking for something, but generally 500 people to 1,000 can get it in any market. It's not like thousands of people can get generators. It's not like thousands of people are going to be able to get a 40 pack of water and get 10 of them. It's not going to happen like that. So again, this is what we're talking about. Global meltdown begins. Global means. Think of this. The world is global. Americans think like they're the only star in the universe. The rest of the world is having a meltdown as well. We're all in the same boat. So therefore, there's planes and levels to this when something happens over in europe or asia it's going to affect the united states things are already happening you're not going to be able to lean on each other like you would before all right in meaning countries wow victor that's amazing god bless them exactly imagine how many people died because they obviously couldn't they couldn't get the generators. They didn't have the four to six month supply already built in. And remember, there wasn't any water. I mean, it was terrible over there. Terrible American territories. Um, yes, Victor, six month staples, 20 gallon water, all times, paper goods, generator, gas cans, petty cash, et cetera, storm come in all forms. Exactly, Professor Auntie Val, because just because we're talking hurricane, it's not always a hurricane, right? So thank you for that. Um, it's amazing. Victor Marrero, Vanessa, thank you. They are true survivors. I can't imagine there were people with no power generation for over one year. And we complain here when the power goes out 10 minutes. Exactly, Victor Marrero. Except one day we could find ourselves where it's not just 10 minutes. 
it's not just one day. It's not just two days. It's not just four days. And think about it. I mean, everything is based on electricity. And if you get turned off, you don't have refrigerations. You don't have most times if a person has septics or people have sewer and water and you have hot water in your house, no longer hot water, all kind of bad things happen. So think about all this, ladies and gentlemen, because the global meltdown has begun, but we don't know if it's going to be a total meltdown. It has started, but we don't know where this is going to end. Is there going to be ways that these countries and governments are going to be able to survive? We're going to find out. You're right, Victor. Exactly. Auntie Val, absolutely. All is good until you really need it. Then you wish you had taken action sooner. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. That's exactly right. So I just want to have this conversation tonight because we talk about finances all the time and making money, but it does you no good. You can have a million dollars, but if your million dollars can't go out here and buy simple food, you're just like everybody else. You're going to be scrambling around and your money may not be able to buy anything because again, this is one of the problems that I have with gold and silver prepper stacking, because if I need protection and somebody walks to me and says, hey, man, I, I got gold coins or silver coins. I need some food. I'm like, hold on. Uh, I'm not selling my food. I, don't, I need that. There, I mean, what you can't give me anything for food. You can't give me anything for water. So any survival items you can't give me any trinkets i'm not selling those to you i need those especially if like in the in, in the victor morrell's uh, parent situation if we don't things have already gone out three weeks four weeks a month two months somebody walks up to me and says here i have i have gold and silver i'm gonna look like have, have you lost your mind i mean you got something i can use I mean, I, I mean, because I got to give you something that's valuable. So I need something that's valuable. So that's why it's very, very interesting when you start thinking I'm going to stack this money. At X amount, let's say a mil is crazy, but let's say you go, oh, I got to keep a million dollars in my safe. Then you go, oh, yeah, I have these gold and silver and precious metal coins. But again, I contend nobody's walking. You're going to the grocery store. Grocery stores are empty, a la Venezuela, for instance, right? They say you only can get three items. No amount of money or gold or anything is going to help you. But somebody rolls down there and says, hey, I have weapons. Okay, now we might be able to talk. We got an exchange here. When somebody says we have some uh, generator potentially, now you have something to exchange with because it's stuff people need. So it changes the dynamics of everything if things hit the fan. So again, just keep all of that in mind. And like Auntie Val said, this is what you're going to need, ladies and gentlemen. Just think of it as a hurricane prep, right? Hurricane prep, except instead of three, four, five, six, seven days, eight days of no electricity, no nothing, think of five months, six months, all right? Minimum. That's what you need to think about. All right. Now, let's get into the million dollar question, though. Get into that. We are spoiled here. We are not used to that, but we better get ready. Exactly, Vanessa Kamage. 200 years ago, no electricity in most homes. So people lived off the land. They were more, they were pre better prepared because they were used to no lights in the house using gasoline or, or oil. They're used to having to scrub their clothes by hand and dry them on the line. They were used to cooking on a self-made fire, right? There's no propane and all that. So they're used to going out hunting. No grocery stores in sight, right? There's no refrigerator. So they had to do things a different way. Americans aren't used to that. This isn't 200, 250, 300 years ago. This is now spoiled. We're all spoiled. All right. 
Hope you are feeling better, sis. Exactly. Thank you so much for mentioning that, Professor Auntie Val. That's right. Vanessa Comigate's been on here a little bit longer, so I'm pretty sure, yes, I'm feeling much better because of Dr. Comigate. <laughs> exactly. Right on. Very, very happy to hear that. After you told me you had the two shots, I, I was, my heart flooded for a second until you said, yes, I have two shots. And I was like, okay, she's going to be all right. All right. So I think you're going to be fine. Uh, we never know though. Cause like I say, generally that's the sign that you won't be going to the hospital being on a ventilator. Um, good to hear that back in the fight. Exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now here's the thing. So now let's just say you did have that four week, six week, two month, four month supply. And then let's say just what happened in the Puerto Rico, four months goes by, still can't go to the grocery store, still have no electricity. Now what, ladies and gentlemen? See, that's why you want to prepare longer than shorter. So now you're sitting there going, okay, we got a barter now, right? You're looking for items that somebody else would have. So now you're going to have to give up some sort of asset that people deem valuable in order for them to give you some food or water. That will be an interesting exchange. So here's what's going to end up happening. Money always will work because money can still buy something. So if somebody has a dollar bill, recognized as money, then people will say, okay, I'll take that. That's never going to be in dispute. Now, so there is the other problem. Except for some people, it will not be because you planned ahead. How are you going to generate money if there's no power, if there's no job, if there's nothing that you can do to generate income, right? From the surface, what I mean by you're not going to work, electricity's turned off, so even this live stream we can't do, right? Internet's out, can't do that either. Let's just say the towers are out because we had war or something. Cell towers are out, now what? We're gonna have problems. So this is why sometimes you should be diversified with your money as well. One market, and this is why, let's just call it what it is, the top 10 percenters, they have offshore. They have banks in different jurisdictions, different countries. Now you're understanding part of why when we're talking, again, Punta Cana, we're talking Dominican Republic, we're talking Belize, we're talking other jurisdictions around the world, Mexico, wherever you can open up another bank account and put some money there. That is also a different way that you can protect yourself. Because now, if all the banks shut down here, you can still go, oh, my stuff works because I have my stuff working from a different country. I can actually still go to the other country and get my stuff. You see what I'm saying? If there's planes still going. But all I'm trying to say is you need to diversify, not just think that America's the safe haven that. It's been for quite a long time. Think of it as just another country because it's a global world. And so you're going to need safe havens, neutral locations like Belize, Costa Rica, for instance, right? But they have their own set of rules when you're trying to open up bank accounts and do something with USA citizens. So you're going to have to find a friendly location that allows US citizens to open up bank accounts. So think about that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm giving you some little playbooks just in case things go bad because people like, I believe Victor Morrell might have dual citizenship of some sort, I'm not sure. But everybody's not lucky enough to have dual citizenships from other countries. The United States started talking about they're not gonna accept dual citizenship potentially. So that would in turn mean other countries might refuse that. So you might have to pick. Can you imagine that? So now if you enter into another country, you're illegal if the passport is turned off. So all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, you have to start thinking outside of the box. The world is a ghetto, all right? Just think of it that way. It's not just a song. Every country looks out for itself. 
Nobody's sitting around here rescuing the North Korean citizens. They're not going over there saying, hey, this guy over here who just maims and kills people and starves his people and nobody's rescuing them. It's the same thing here. Nobody's going to come over to America and rescue you. All right. This is how the world works. They're just going to sit there and watch. All right. Yeah. You might have a few of uh, some some nonprofits, but they're not going to be effective when you're talking about hundreds of millions of people. All right. So this is what I wanted to talk about tonight. 40 minutes in. So, again, we can talk finance. We're talking finance. Think about other alternatives where you can have. So when you're going around the world. It used to be a lot easier. Just I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, I used to go when I went to uh, Australia. All right. Walked in, opened up a bank account. No problem. Now go to Australia, try to open up a bank account. All of a sudden we got problems. Right. All I'm saying is things aren't as easy as they start tightening for all countries. OK, just keep that in mind. And some countries won't even open up uh, bank accounts for United States citizens. Think about that. Because the United States citizens, they're under jurisdiction of the United States government and people don't want to deal with it when the United States government comes over to the other country and says, we want all your uh, inf banking information from USA citizens. And they're like, what do you know? And then they say, well, we'll just cut you off. So they don't want to even put themselves in that situation. All right. So that's why being a USA citizen, it works for the most part. We're number one. Our passport can get us into the most countries. All right. That's the one thing. If you're a United States citizen, you can get into the most countries on the planet. All right. Number one passport. But I'm just saying there's restrictions that come along with it. So just think about it. Get your finances. Get a, another account outside of the United States jurisdiction. And everybody in Dominican Republic, get your uh, banking over there. All right. Whoever is investing over there, go over there, open up a bank account there. They're not friends yet with the United States. They're one of like uh, six or 10 countries who didn't sign the agreement yet for that banking such scenario. All right. So that's the other thing finance. You want to be able to make money. And now you have to start thinking about where can you leave money safely? Well, let's call it the top 10 percenters. They don't lose. So the stock market, no matter which one you're in, Asian, European, doesn't matter. You need some money somewhere besides. You can have them in the stock market. They're going to be safe until they're not because you're still going to have to pull it out to a bank in the United States. And just because a bank has your money, they may not give it to you. In case you're not understanding what I'm saying, when you give your money to a bank, you've actually turned it over to them to use as they want to. It's in the agreement when you're opening up a bank account in actuality. So therefore, when you walk back into the bank and say, I need $10,000 and the teller starts this nonsense, what do you need the money for? And you're looking at them like, I do, none of your business. They can withhold the funds if they want to. And that's why it happens. They'll say, oh, we can only give you 5,000 a day, come back for 5,000 tomorrow. They can do whatever they want once you turn over the money. That's why sometimes people put money in their safe, bury the money, whatever the case may be. They keep cash on hand, like Professor Auntie Val was saying with the hurricane. Keep a little bit of cash. You need that duffel bag of cash, ladies and gentlemen. All right. You're always going to need a little duffel bag of cash. And it always helps if you have more than one jurisdiction where you're holding money as well. Um, when I used to play poker and it was international, still is international, but we used to be able to play online. And there were things such as net teller and other banking friends that you would be able to send money to Europe, to the Isle of Man to all these jurisdictions that weren't friendly with the United States. We also would have a card. So, you know, the Visa and MasterCard, that's worldwide. America is not the only country that can be on that system. So we would have a net, I had a net teller card. 
I had some other ones too. I can't remember the names of them. So money sitting overseas, United States banned online poker. What that did was that blocked you being able to get your money off of the online poker rooms at the time. People had hundreds of thousands of dollars on online poker rooms because they never thought, you know, the free country of the Americas, they never thought that that would be a thing, right? It's your money. You should be able to do what you want with it. You can bet on horses. You can gamble in casinos online. Why would they block poker? Well, they did. And people had their monies tied up, some people. So again, because I had offshore, Isle of Man, Cyprus, France, I just shipped my money out there. But get this, here's the funniest thing. Ship the money over there. And then I told them, hey, wire me the money. It was funny as hell. I couldn't pull it off directly off the poker room online, but I could have my other places in the other jurisdictions wire me money using the uh, SWIFT code for United States. Crazy stuff, ladies and gentlemen. You don't understand. This is America, and there's some things you don't get. These guys can shut you down in a heartbeat. So you should think about other locations. So like Mr. Cool going over to Europe, hanging out in Spain. See, these are the things you want to have jurisdictions where you should have an account somewhere else outside of the U.S. This is why companies have offshore banking. All right. Offshore shelf companies, offshore LLCs. This is why billions of dollars, Microsoft, Apple, all these companies, Amazon have offshore. Think about it. You should be a company. That's why you have your social security number. If you're an American citizen, you are an LLC. In reality, they tax you. You are an LLC. All right. Personally, even though they don't count you as an LLC, but that's what you really are. That's why you have a social security number. You're monetized from the time you're born. All right. They know how much you're generally going to make for the motherland. All right. Good to hear that back in the fight. Yep. Doing well. Praise God. Exactly. Days government take weeks and months to really recover. Even here in Florida. Exactly. Professor Auntie Val. Victor Morrell. Thank you, sir. Exactly. So, Yes, everybody, we're pulling for you. We're glad to hear you're here and all is good. All right. Sounds like 401 caves. Yep. Gives you the illusion of a pension when it really isn't. Ask those retiring this year. They will agree. Exactly. Ask those that retired last year or the year before, and they're sitting there like, I retired with a million dollars. But then when I look at my account right now, it's down like 20. It's like, wait, it's only 800,000, 750. And I used 30 or 40 or 60 of it over these last two years. Wait a minute. How I, whoa, wait. And if prices continue to skyrocket, you're not going to be able to last. So you're going to always need some extra revenues. So while I'm getting to the extra revenue part, think about this. So now you have bank accounts outside of the United States. But here's the thing. Remember, all these programs, Instagram, TikToks, Facebooks, remember, they're just not in the United States. YouTube. They are like dot D-O for Dominican Republic, for instance. Dot P-E or P-R. All right. Dot C-H-I. Right. These are the things that you don't think about unless you start thinking global that the internet is separated, so to speak. All right. You could be in another country. The internet there is totally different. But my point I'm trying to make is you can still do something. So if America all of a sudden is like this wasteland, you can go outside the United States, let's say to Mexico, because that's dot MX. And now you still have all your stuff that you did online. Like, for instance, what I've done, right? Six, seven, eight hundred videos. So we have all this stuff that I can just either access in Mexico or DR or Puerto Rico, whatever. 
I can access it and still do what I need to do. It's just that maybe in the US, hey, the grid's down. People can't see it. So what? I still get to make some cash. Doesn't matter. So all I'm saying is this is what you need to consider. So you're going to need to have extra revenue coming in. You can't be like 75 years old and then thinking, oh, my God, I, I have no no way to get any money or make any money and I can't get a job at this other place, this other country I live in or what I have to do here in America. I have problems. Social Security is not kicking out any money. The 401k, the pension money isn't kicking out money. What are you going to do now? Banks aren't kicking out money. You had money in a bank. That's not there. Think about it. If a global meltdown happens financially, think about if all your money is cut off. And all you have is your duffel bag of cash, don't have a job, electricity's out, now what? It's going to be a very daunting situation, especially the older you get. All I'm saying is these are some things to think about, ladies and gentlemen, because you guys are going to have to think what's happened in Russia, Ukraine. Ukraine never thought Russia would do this. Nobody really thought Russia would do what they're doing, but now their power grid's all jacked. Electricity's out. Internet's out. I mean, no food at the grocery stores. I mean, all this stuff with the blink of an eye happens, and now they're in a six-month turmoil, seven-month turmoil coming up. So all I'm saying, you just never know what's going to happen. So you got to protect yourself by being prepared, ladies and gentlemen. All right? So next time you go outside the country and you go to a country, try to open up a bank account. That's all I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter if they're friendly with the United States or not. All I'm saying is open a bank account, have a little bit of kibbles and bits sitting there, because if you never ever need to access it, at least you know you can access it. All right. And they do have debit cards because my Australian bank, I have a debit card, use it here in the USA. All right. So just keep that in mind. That's how it works. Um, and so back to the story at hand, I mentioned about the uh, poker situation. So eventually, the net teller I mentioned, eventually, here's what happens. United States government, they figures it out. The land of the free. They're like, hold on. These guys can get money from overseas. They had to call up net teller and say, hey, hey, hey. We're not allowing our United States citizens to use uh, the poker services. So therefore, we need you to turn off uh, being able to have United States citizens use your service. That's how they block them. Because they're on the Visa MasterCard network, remember? <laughs> not on the JCB. All right. I'm just saying, you know, Europe has different accounts. So I was like, fine. I still got money in that teller. So what? When I go to Europe, I use it. Great. But United States citizens, they blocked it because they have a code. It's all weird, ladies and gentlemen. Things aren't what they appear to be. You do not live in the land of the free like you think. You're only living in the land of the free because you can go down to the grocery store. You have a job. You have a bank. It's generally trustworthy until it's not. Until you go down to the bank and be like knocking on doors and they're going, uh, we're, we're closed. Yeah, that's already happened, ladies and gentlemen. I told you about it earlier, earlier this year. We're closed. Okay, uh, what does that mean? Oh, all you guys who have an account, a bank account, checking and savings account, we're, uh, you, you, your account's over here at another bank. You can go over there. Wait, what about my broker's account? Um, oh, no, we're holding on to that. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. We, we got we to gotta figure out, what do you mean, figure out what? <laughs> we got to figure this out. So you have thousands of people, their brokerage accounts, which they thought is their 401ks and money sitting around is hemmed up. Now you have to go through the American government to get your money. All right? So think about this. This is no more, no less than, look, let's just get the survival of the fittest. Your duffel bag of cash, if you're going to do duffel bags of cash, I'm just going to tell you like it is. Do not try to take duffel bags of cash on a plane. All right. Do not. Now, on a plane leaving the country and you can land and then they ask you, hey, do you got money on you? OK, whatever. You bring a duffel bag of cash back into the United States. 
Go on and try it if you want to. But you're going to find yourself extorted. You're going to find yourself hemmed up if you walk in and go, oh, yeah, man, I got $20,000. They're going to go, what? What did you just say? Yeah, I got $25,000 with me. You are now going to be in the back room. They're going to sit there and go, how did you get this money? And you're going to be like, none of your business. What are you talking about? I didn't do nothing wrong. Uh, how did you get this money? We need to know that you're not um, laundering money. You got to prove it. And, well, you know, we're going to do an investigation against you. What do you mean investigation for what? I earned the money. I have proof of it. I pay taxes. What's your problem? Oh, well, we're, we're going to need to hold on to this for a little while until we finish our investigation. And then you might be guilty of something. So why don't you just sign off on this right now? Why don't you just, we'll, we'll, we'll be willing to give you like half of it. And then you're just going to have to forfeit the other half. And then that way we won't do an investigation. They extort you, ladies and gentlemen. You guys don't know about this because you're walking around thinking everything is cool until it's not. You don't think that you're walking around. You're going, hey, I got my duffel bag of cash. I'm leaving the country. No big deal. I earned it rightfully. Everything's legit above boards. It saved it over the time and years. And then you go to another country. They say, oh, yeah, no problem. You come back to the United States. They're like, what do you mean you got $30,000? Where'd you get it from? What are you doing with this? Who are you? You're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it doesn't matter. But yes, it matters, ladies and gentlemen. This is going on right now. Okay, this isn't some fantasy. This isn't some made up stuff. This is going on right now, but it's only happening to 100 people, 1,000 people. So you're not getting the, you know, you're not hearing a lot about it. You can Google it and find out. I'm pretty sure there's going to be tons of people that said they got hijacked at the border or at the airport for bringing back in cash and then telling them about it. Not the fact that they were hiding it. The fact that they said, yeah, I got 15,000. I got 30 G's. What? So what? I just won a tournament. So what? See? And this is why you win a tournament outside the United States and it's wire it. In fact, here's the thing. Wire it to a cage in Vegas. There you go, right? It's not going to a bank. I'm just saying. I, I shouldn't even be talking about this right now. This is why I'm on America's Most Wanted list. All right? I shouldn't even be talking about this. So you have money legally. Instead of bringing your duffel bag of cash back to the United States, just take your butt down to go pay the freaking hundred bucks. All right? Pay the freaking hundred bucks to wire. All right? And so now I give you another. Wire it to a casino. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> when you get to a casino, then you say, hey, I want my money. And they're going, how do you want that, sir? I want my money in chips. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This was the good old days. We can't pull that off anymore. Because I'm just going to tell you, again, the United States came up with another brilliant plan. They said, we need to know, I can't remember what it is now. If a person pulls out X amount of dollars at the casino cage, they need to fill out something. And I can't remember what that is now. Um, that's how they block that. Because, you know, we always know what the what the go arounds. Right. So to speak, it's our money. It ain't like we're trying to hide anything. It's just that you have cash. You wire it to the cage. You go get your chips. Now the chips is almost like a money laundering scenario because the chips are unaccounted for, so to speak. So now you got chips. You don't have the cash. You get chips. Then you just cash your chips in because you went to go gamble. So that was a way where it was untraceable, like crypto is supposed to be, for instance. Right. That's the point of crypto borderless. So you don't have to do anything crazy and it can't be stopped. So now you know why you need crypto and why it's very, very important to have crypto. Not on an exchange, but in a wallet finance, ladies and gentlemen. So this is why the nodes, like when we're talking about the debt box node, this is why when we're talking about these rewards, if those things actually work, they don't realize how important they would be. A global meltdown would be nothing. Because if you have an ecosystem 
and now we're borderless and all that matters is I have my wallet right here on my phone and I can send money to any person I want or pay for things. Now that changes the whole landscape. So now you understand why you need crypto. Yes, I know crypto markets are down 99% year over year pretty much, right? But that is what's going on with crypto. And oh, by the way, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about, um, what was it? Fidelity, Swab. Okay, speaking of crypto, this is how significant this is going to be. Because think about this. This is borderless, right? Think about it. It's borderless. So if it's going to be borderless, now we don't have to run around with duffel bags of cash. Because we are going to run around with duffel bags of our little wallet. And now we can be anywhere on the planet. And it's safe because we have it on us. We don't have to rely on a bank, right? Here we go. Even pension can be taken replaced for something else that sounds great on paper, but in practice, it's devastating. Exactly. Ask those United employees whose company pensions were terminated in 2010. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen, worked there 30, 40 years. Not me, but people worked at UA. 30, 40 years thinking they had a pension, thinking they were good. All of a sudden, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, um, early buyout for you. Sorry, pension not coming. Or those people that work for Sears and Roebuck, their pensions got yanked. I mean, teachers unions in certain states, they had pensions and the state raided their pensions, man. That's right. So this is why, just like in California, there's pensions. The PERS, state of California, pension program. It's underfunded. A lot of pension funds are underfunded because you need new employees to actually pay out. It's a Ponzi scheme. So if you can't hire, let's put it what it is, ladies and gentlemen. You have a thousand people who get three thousand dollars per month. All right. Three million dollars per month. You're going to need in your workforce. Where are you going to get the three million dollars per month to pay it? They have some of those funds already in the pension, but they based it on you have new employees to actually contribute into the pension fund, just like Social Security system. It's a Ponzi scheme. So you have to think about it sooner or later. There may not be payouts, especially if a 10% of the workforce is employed than what was employed 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. That's what's happening right now. So the meltdown has actually begun, but you don't see it yet because the meltdown is going to occur when you have 3,000 people retired. You only have 100 people working in the office and these people are supposed to get their $5,000 per month pension money. And all of a sudden, it's not coming or what's just uh, we're talking about here with United Airlines and Sears. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we got to shut that down. That's what's going to happen. And the global meltdown has already happened. Now, I want to show you this here. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. How about this? Look at this. What's this here? Swab, Citadel Securities, Fidelity, firms starting crypto exchanges. Oh, imagine that, ladies and gentlemen. The top 10 percenters got their hands in the cookie jar. They found out that this is even better than their free brokerage accounts because every transaction they receive a fee. And not only that, they actually have your crypto on the exchange, meaning that's no more, no less than the bank. They can take your money anytime they want from the exchange. And you might want to notice here, you know, I'm big on this. You might want to notice Schwab, Citadel, Fidelity, other Wall Street firms. Remember, they are part of Wall Street. 
They are part of the American banking system. They are part of the federal system. All right. These guys are giving out your information to the United States government. Therefore, they can jack you anytime, just like a bank. So don't think that your money is going to be safe on this exchange or any exchange for that matter. So keep these things in mind. Whenever you see these maneuvers, this is because they realize there's trillions of dollars sitting on exchanges. And that's another way for them to charge whatever they want to charge. They don't charge for banking accounts anymore. But the day is going to come every time you transfer money out, they're going to say, OK, one day it was 50 cents. But now all of a sudden it's a dollar. You see what I'm saying? This is a gold mine for them. And not only is it a gold mine, what we've learned from Celsius, BlockFi, Nexo, and all these other guys, when they're holding crypto, they're doing exactly what these guys are going to do. They are going to borrow against those assets, which are your money, your crypto. They're going to borrow and use those to borrow money and then high risk maneuvers, whatever that may be. Now it's all going to be at risk. Just what's happening right now. That's why there's a global meltdown. You have to understand what we're dealing with. You guys may not be thinking we talk about stop struggling now, but you have to think as a global environment and you have to understand these little subtle moves. Some people right now see this right here on the screen and they're just like, ah, we know who Schwab is. We know who Citadel and Fidelity is. We know who these uh, Wall Street firms are. This is awesome. This, some people are thinking, oh, we have regulation, right? Regulation. Yeah, you have regulation, meaning you're regulated. They're not. They can do whatever they want with your crypto. They're going to be sanctioned by the United States government. They can do what, just like uh, Celsius is sanctioned. Remember, Celsius had to get New York approval, United States approval, uh, California approval, and they still were able to leverage everybody's funds in the account and get caught up into somebody in China, uh, Evergard, going out of business. And that affected a whole bunch of these companies. They're regulated, didn't stop them from going bust. So the same thing is going to happen here. These guys are regulated, but let's face facts, Swab, Citadel, Fidelity. The reason why they mentioned those three is because generally you don't hear about Swab stealing people's money and going out of business. You don't hear Fidelity doing that. You don't hear Citadel doing that. That's why they name these guys because they are not going to name other ones who's going to be the nefarious ones that's going to figure out a way to leverage your crypto. You put crypto in just like a bank. They're going to borrow against that to buy some other assets. And now it's going to be leveraged. Global meltdown. Just what's going to happen coming up. Just what happened with Celsius when it, one of the levers happened when there's another company or two or three that go out of business and can't pay that money back, that leverage is gone and people's money gone. All right, there we go. Uh, I hear that California pension fiasco today. I didn't hear about it. Imagine yourself in such a position and you're in your 50s or 60s going back to work. Are you kidding me? All right, Victor Marrero, I didn't hear about this California pension situation. Hold on. Um, let's see. Um, did something happen? I didn't hear about this. California pension crisis. California reports first loss since Great Depression. Here it is. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly. Wait a minute. What's this? 1.5. Okay. I don't see anything today. This is where I'm talking about. Here's the CalPERS right here. Uh, this is from July 2022. So let me know if, look at this. Holy smokes. Reports 29 billion loss. First since Great Recession and turmoil. Holy Toledo. Man, and they don't employ as many people as they used to. So when you start taking away these this $30 billion L, that's crazy. They have $469 billion in there. 21.3% return. They're, this is the whole point. These pension funds have to put their money into investment vehicles, meaning a Fidelity, meaning a Goldman Sachs, meaning a Schwab, meaning a JP Morgan and all that. They are putting it at risk. So it's in the stock market. 
all right? So you have to think about, that's why a stock market meltdown is pretty serious. I didn't hear about any California situation today, and apparently they're keeping it hidden, Victor Marrero, because it didn't come up when I hit in the Google. That's very, very interesting. We put in Google, it's not coming up. This right here is from July 20th. But um, when we're putting in here, um, California pension um, problem today, um, it didn't come up. I just put in something a little bit different. It keeps coming up, pension dilemma. Yeah, see, they're keeping it. Notice it's quiet. I brought it up, but notice it keeps it under calmatters.org. Immense pension dilemma. Un they're all unfunded, ladies and gentlemen. This is in Kentucky. This is in Tennessee. This is in Florida. It's everywhere they're underfunded. All right? Um, I don't see anything from today, though. So, again, pension tracker, shut down operations. <laughs> of course they did. Because they don't want people tracking this. Because you have to understand, it's a Ponzi scheme. All right. Once you understand it's a Ponzi, then it's over. It's all over. All right. Talking crypto. Hector Network is still printing stake rewards. Yes, they are doing exactly what they said they're doing. They're building a bank empire. I never sold. I checked the stake amount and price yesterday and started doing the salsa dance. That's correct. But as you know, Victor Marrero, I can't do the salsa dance because I took out I believe almost everything from Hector. I might've left a little change in there, but I took it all out. Cause remember Hector was, uh, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Anyhow, we lost 99.99%. So I was like, okay, that's not doing as much good. But yes, I do like that, but I didn't hold on to Hector as much as initially cause I transferred it into something else that went lost 99.9%. <laughs> I mean, it just kept going down, down, down. Um, what was it? Uh, power nodes, right? Um, which was only 270, actually. So I, mu I must have left something in Hector. I can't remember. Um, but took some out, put 270 in the power nodes. That 270 at power nodes is worth probably 27 cents. I mean, it's ridiculous. All right. Um, but yeah, Hector's the only one that actually has what they put in place was ecosystem. Remember when uh, we had the guest on, Hector was here, Prometheus. So um, Victor Marrero kept his money over at Hector, which is very, very cool. I still have something at Klima. I still have something with you no know, Wonderland. Oh, Wonderland Time is where I took stuff out. That's right. Um, Hector, I must, I haven't even checked Hector. I just let that ride because, you know, I believe in them. Um, I forgot about Wonderland Time. You know, gone. Strong block. Took out. Um, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So. Regarding that, and again, um, it's crazy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're one hour in and 13 minutes. If you can't get in the chat room tonight, there's a reason. That's because on Wednesday night live streams, only members with the icon, like Vanessa Comagate, saying good move, Victor. She has the icon. She can be in the chat room tonight. But on Monday and Friday, 9 p.m. Friday night, please come check us out again. It'll be a different subject matter. And then on uh, Monday night, 8.50 p.m., you can be uh, in the chat room without being a member, all right? And again, after this live stream, if you ever want to make comments or have a discussion, hey, hit a comment down below and somebody or me will respond, all right? That's how simple this is, ladies and gentlemen. But if you like what we're talking about, subscribe to the channel, click the all notification bell, all right? That would be greatly appreciated. So, Again, Victor Morero, let me know um, the California pension fiasco if that was actually today. Let me know if you know any other further information because, again, I just Googled it and it's hidden. If something happened, in fact, if there's even any pension fiasco that occurred, it's not even coming up in Google. And this is what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. You just don't know what's going on. So all we have is pension crisis, right? Um, I'm going to try collapse. And again, there's nothing coming up. All that comes up is the same 
Number one, number two, Cal Mathers, Cal Mathers. They're not saying if something happened. All right. Even the twenty nine billion dollar loss there. That's a loss, but they still have four hundred and sixty nine billion. Um, they're saying Cal Pers logs decade worth six point one percent loss as stocks and bonds. OK, so they're talking about this Cal Pers public employees retirement system. And unfortunately. This is pretty bad because that retirement system funds many different pension programs. So one thing I learned with crypto is that you have to do your research for good projects. Then weather the storm. I put Hector back action list. Yep. All right. Glad to hear this. In fact, he has me curious now because I haven't even checked it. Um, even checked. Yeah, it's pretty much just set it and forget it and let it ride. Yeah, it's down to nine dollars and seventy eight cents. But the rewards are still generating. A lot of these companies stopped trying to give out rewards, making you jump through hoops. So here's the year over year. This is going to be interesting, right? This is, yeah, three hundred and fifty seven dollars. So we're down to, you know, ninety nine point nine percent, whatever. But they're still ticking. And the weird part about Hector is they have an ecosystem. That's the weirdest part. It's not like these other places that said, okay, all we're doing is some sort of Dow, potentially Ponzi-ish stuff. These guys actually have an ecosystem. So I'm surprised that their coin has been here, but I can only imagine what's going to happen in the future um, when crypto comes back. All right. So research is key. All right. The California thing I heard on radio FM this morning on the way to work. The initial conversation was around the number of folks moving out of California for Texas and Florida. OK, yeah, that that makes perfectly good sense. But the problem still with any pension plan, you guys, some people watching this right now may have a pension plan. This is why you need to put some money aside yourself. A pension is a Ponzi, all right? That's really what it is, just like Social Security. You can borrow against the pension. They've done that already, right? Pensions borrow against their pension funds. They also borrow their pension funds occasionally. That does happen occasionally. And then a takeover plot occurs, and guess what happens? Then they try to steal all the funds from the pension plan. It's always wherever there's a lump sum of money, somebody's trying to grab it. But the Ponzi aspect, once again, I'll repeat, in case you do not understand, the workers they're working now are paying for the pensions of people that have retired 20 years ago. All right? That's why the pension fund has to be put at risk investing to earn 6, 7, 8, 9, 10% year over year because they can't keep up because people are living longer. All right. Think about it. My mom and dad lived over uh, 80, 85, 86, 87, 88, 30 years. 30 years they've been retired. Right. Mom was 90 this year, would have been retired, getting retirement money back when they re retire at 60. Or like Victor Marrero and anybody else that's been in the military. You retired. You've been getting um, retirement funds for 20, 30 years already. So that's how my dad was retired. 50 years he's been getting money from the uh, for uh, military. And without having additional people putting money in, where's that money going to come from? All right. So this is why military started saying, hey, we got to close down bases. We can do that. We're going to start, you know, don't have that many people in the armed forces. We, they started shrinking because once again, you're having people live longer than 67, 70 years old. These people are living 75, 80, 85, 90, 95. That's what's going to happen in our era, this era right now in the last 30 years. 
people started taking better care of their health. So no longer is the average age going to be 70s, 77, 78. Now it's 85, 86, 90, 95. Those extra 10 to 15 years that people may live, that adds up. Social Security can't hold up because they were counting on people dying around 70. They used to, but no longer. So that's why Social Security is going to be a problem. And that's why there's hardly going to be anything left for your grandkids or kids. So I'm just saying. Okay. Um, their price projected for Hector 2024 is over 200. I plan to add to that bag slowly. Like you said, set it and forget it. Exactly. That's all I do. Like, again, I have some of these node projects that have done nothing, absolutely nothing. So there's nothing to do. Just let it sit there. It was money that was going to be lost anyhow. That's the way I look at it. Only invest what you can afford to. That's how you got to look at any project or any investment at this point. Global meltdown has begun. We're protecting ourselves. So how do you protect yourself? You need money to work for itself. And if you're in the crypto space, I'm feeling a lot better now after I find out Fidelity, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, Schwab, they're in the exchange business. Now, I know they're in it for the money, but the point of the matter is they're regulated. They're, in Wall, they're on Wall Street. So they have regulations and then they have some uh, shareholders to account all this for. So they're not getting into it for a meltdown, right? They're getting into it for profit. And they want it to last forever. That's a good sign. The only problem is they've already manipulated it to where if the stock market goes down, crypto goes down. That's not a good thing. All right. So we're trying to set it and forget it, which brings us back to the finances. You need a vehicle that's going to be earning money no matter if there's a disaster. And how can that be? Stock market, we get dividends. That's a way. All right. Crypto. We can have these rewards from whether the Dow program, no program, whatever. We can talk about debt box node, which is backed by oil, silver and commodities, precious metals. Those commodities are always going to be of value. They're always going to be needed. Water, natural gas, oil and gold standards. Those are going to be needed. So if we're running generators, we need gas. If you're going to need to cook something and there's nothing there's no uh, uh, gas lines. You're going to need propane, right? Natural gas. You're going to need these things. If you talk about gold, gold is always going to be a uh, commodity that you can exchange. That's recognized worldwide. All right. So think about all that water, finding water underground from a satellite. That's worth who knows how much trillions of dollars. If you can find yourself a place that has an aquifer of water underneath. That turns out to be worth value. So the debt box node under crypto program, in theory, should be a set it and forget it as well, depending on the node you get. And so I should bring up, if you want to find out more about the Xbox node, search the channel. We have it where we're trying to get the natural gas node. It's going to expire on Monday. Search the channel for the uh, debt box node videos, the Stop Struggling Now channel. And then if you want to, enter in to get your own debt box node the link is down below under ix global if you don't have 1250 dollars or 2500 or 4500 and you could only have let's say 250 dollars or more and you want to join us with the group economics then the link is down below for the 4500 debt box node and again it's going to expire next monday right now we have 750 i believe is in there so that means we need another 500 just to get an XPLR node. Then we want the 4,500 natural gas node because that's actually generating about $10, $12, $13 per day in the, um, the, the rewards. So that's not bad, right? Even if it's $10 a day. So at least you're getting $300 per month and maybe more, sometimes $350. It was $450. But more people started getting natural gas nodes at $4,500. That's what we're trying to get to. It's all self-explanatory. There's a video. Go check it out. It's at the SSN Lifestyle sister property. But there's a link down below whether you want to buy the nodes yourself, be a solo artist, 
or if you want to join our group economics activity and go find out about that. Set it and forget it. You want to just let these things sit in reality and see where they ride to for the next year or two after we come out of whatever's going to happen. We know what's going to happen. You guys are here in the SSN Nation. All right. I haven't even ran a video all day. Let's go. I'm going to run a, a video because SSN Lifestyle, we got to talk about it. Now I'm going to do this first because I just did talk about the deck box node, the ring of fire at SSN Lifestyle. Here's the nodes, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So if you want to buy these nodes, this is how much they cost. It's that simple. And they earn, you earn rewards every day, 24 hour periods. All right. So just keep that in mind. And this is just a little interlude so I can get some water and we're going to continue on. And if there's any subject matter anybody wants to talk about, I pretty much have talked about everything I want to talk about tonight. It's a little different. We didn't talk about the money making aspect so much, but we did talk about preparation on what we need. And by the way, that node that has the DLG, remember DLG is a node for debt box and that is actually uh, gold. You can trade your rewards in for actual gold. All right. So you can stack it that way where it's in your possession versus electronic. So that is why that's pretty major. And that's $1,500 for that node, just to give you an idea. All right, let's go. I'm going to play a little um, promo video and let's see which one. I don't even know which one to pick. I haven't made a new one. I think I found some pictures. So, you know, that means there's going to be a new one coming up. So let's go with, um, I can't remember what I put on there. We'll go with this one here. gentlemen there we go so we went through everything and last things there's one last thing that goes along with our global meltdown how can i forget body balance cream your body needs nutrients d3 msm magnesium in this particular brand all right now Remember, your body needs rejuvenated powers. You're going to need like some vitamin C. You need some D3 for your bones and your health. You need some magnesium. You need some MSM for your joints and all that. Because if you have a lack of water, then your body starts acting a little different. So you need supplements is what I'm trying to say. Here's supplements, SSN Lifestyle, $34.99. Go check it out. It's a cream, ladies and gentlemen. All right. It's an SSN lifestyle. So just wanted to point that out. Don't just think water and these uh, prep food stuff is going to be good enough. You're going to need antibiotics. You're going to need extra health things such as uh, emergency. If you don't know what that is, that's extra vitamin C packs. Or you're going to need this type of items. And I know what you're saying. You're going, Eric, look. We can't get antibiotics in America. Well, I know it used to be you can go to the pet store and get some antibiotics. In some states, you still can find some loose antibiotics there. But with all that said, this is why, once again, when you travel outside of the country, you need to consider getting antibiotics. When you're in Mexico, when you're in our uh, favorite spot, Dominican Republic, all right, you need to go to the pharmacy. You need to buy yourself antibiotics because in America, a doctor has to issue antibiotics because generally they don't want you to put them in your system past around five to seven days for the most part. 
They don't feel that you're an adult and can handle the situation. They're thinking that you're going to keep taking them. And the longer you take them, then your body gets adjusted to it. And then therefore it won't be able to fight it. But generally five to seven days max, that's all you can take antibiotics for. So when you go to these other countries, you need that penicillin. You need that amoxicillin, ampicillins. You need all this stuff. Pain pills over 500 milligrams. You need this stuff, right? You can get those outside of the United States. The land of the free, restricted. The other countries whose, I guess, land of the free, you can go to a pharmacy and buy them. So again, these are some of the things that you need to start thinking about. All right? Because uh, think about this. You're out traveling around. And if you're traveling around America and you need antibiotics, yes, you have insurance. You go see a doctor. They're going to hook you up. you got to go see the doctor. If there's no doctor <laughs> nearby, you can't get antibiotics. So that's why in my bags, I always have antibiotics, period. Antibiotics and pain pill, I keep. Those are on tap, all right? That's another thing. That should just be on tap anyhow, just for your own protection because you never know where you're going to find yourself, right? So all I'm saying is, especially if you travel worldwide, you, don't never, you, you never know. Every country is different. They have different laws. So you want to pack your antibiotics, pain pills, even though you may not use them. But I have I'm packed up. So I have things I don't have to worry about if something happens all of a sudden. Oh, toothache. Right. You're like, oh, my God, what's going on? So now, you know, you got the amoxicillins or penicillins, whatever you need. You check. OK, you have that handle. You have pain pills over 500 mill 500 milligrams or higher. Right. So you don't have to worry about the 250 off the shelf, nor do you have to worry about going to a doctor to get them, right? So these are the things that you need. I always carry an extra vitamin C packs because you never know where you're going to be. So all I'm saying, you need these kind of things always. In fact, just put them in your bag. You should always have it in your bag, a little sum in your bag, a whole bunch of wherever your other stash is, but you should always have a few on you. So that way, wherever you go somewhere, you're already protected. You don't have to worry about, oh, no, I got to go to a doctor. Where's the doctor? You don't have to worry. All right, Eric, let's see. Today, I got the price for the cheapest unit built at Connor Rock Galaxy. It's a one bedroom, one bath, second floor, 694 square feet. $220,000 on the second floor? That's not a penthouse? Oh, my, but 700 square feet is pretty big. They have two bedroom units to 700 square feet. That's a huge unit. Um, that's the cheapest unit at the Galaxy? I thought it was one. Oh, no, that was Universe. That was 158. My God, ladies and gentlemen, talk about a real estate boom in the DR. Okay, Victor Marrero, I got I, I, I hate to say it. I just got to let people know. He bought a two-bedroom pre-construction for $231,000. They are now selling one bedrooms for two twenty dollars at the Galaxy. So therefore, the one bedrooms were probably, were they one? I don't know what the one bedrooms at the Galaxy were. I just know what they were at the Condo, Universe, um, there's one I'm missing, but they weren't up there. They were like 99, 117, 220 at the Galaxy. They must have started at around 150 then at the Galaxy or 170. Actually, I never knew how much a one bedroom was at the Galaxy. Um, like we said, your two bedroom is in the 350 to 400 range. I'm pretty sure. I think we, we established that. So he is. 30% LTV, which is pretty awesome. So we got to give a <laughs> Victor Marrero winning. Everyone else in the DR winning. The question is, are we still going to win after the meltdown on the real estate market? Because the meltdown has begun. All right. So congratulations on everybody who do not buy a house last year or beginning of this year. 
And congratulations, because if you didn't buy at the beginning of this year, you should not have even thought about buying one over the last six months. Congratulations for all those people who sold their house and took that huge equity boost and said, you know what, I'll take that $150,000, $200,000, $250,000, of equity, and I'm just going to go rent me a place, and I'm going to spend about 30000 of it over the next year. We'll see what happens on the other side. Because it's all going down this year, ladies and gentlemen, and in 2023, buy a house. All right, not multifamily. You hear me say different things. I'm not saying buy multifamily. I'm saying buy a house. That's what I'm saying. You can do whatever you want with the house. But all I'm saying is when this stuff hits rock bottom, what I mean by rock bottom, 40 to 60%. That's your magic marker number. Mark it down. Checkbox. All right. It's already melting, ladies and gentlemen. Foreclosure market is coming. The West Coast, they have water issues out there. They have electric grid issues out there. And we have an interest rate increase. This is all like a perfect storm. In fact, this is worse than 2008. It's worse. We're going to have, we have electrical problem, infrastructure problems. We have water problems on the West Coast. You have housing that has been overbuilt because these guys were able to get cheap money. This is like the perfect storm. They're going to be abandoning projects. They have already started. The foreclosures that were mandated to not happen last year because of COVID and the year before, those are all on the market now coming out. 3.84 million homes are on foreclosure. Those are going to be up for sale. Then People are going to be trying to get out of their properties they bought over like last year because when they find out they have a $500,000 house and it's only worth four hundred, dollars now they're going to start thinking, well, wait a minute, why am I paying this extra money? Now, they already lived there, so you might as well pay it, but there's going to come a time when they go, wait a minute, all the homes around here, they're not selling for three hundred dollars anymore. They're selling for two fifty. dollars Oh my God, I, I, I paid 400. In fact, I overpaid, right? Because remember, people were overbidding. So I paid 450, 475 for a house that was worth 400 and now it's worth 300, 250. People are going to walk away. They're going to walk away. Call it what it is. The reason why they're going to walk away is simple. You, a person can come back later and say, hey, I, I messed up my credit. But you can always come back later and say, I got 25% down. I mean, let's call it what it is. All right. So, so are you going to uh, overpay or just weather the storm? The question then remains, what if the prices don't come back? See, the prices will come back because we know what the Federal Reserve is going to do. They're going to reduce the interest rate eventually, but they got to get it up high enough. It's not high enough yet. You guys keep hearing me say that. It's not high enough. This is why 0.75 has to come this time and 0.75 has to come in December because they got to get it up another 1.5. What's the quickest way? Because they've never had the balls to do 1%, which they should have done each time. They would have already been at their magic number. There's a magic number to stall the economy. They haven't got there yet. So the longer they prolong this, the worse it's going to be because they're still printing money and giving them to their favorite friends at Wall Street, which means there's going to be inflation. It's not like inflation is going to be 2% or 3% or 1% anytime soon. It's year over year. They printed money all last year. They're printing money this year. They act like they're acting like they're doing something. They're not doing anything. They have to raise the interest rates. They won't stop printing money. And then the federal government, they still have to act like a government. So when you have a president that goes, hey, man, we want to do this infrastructure bill because we haven't done infrastructure for the last 20 years. I'm like, I agree with you need an infrastructure bill, but except we're broke. So now they have to print more money. And then you have a war with Ukraine. Ukraine is under armed. So their arms aren't enough. So we got to ship over billions of dollars worth of arms. We're paying for that. This is insane. There is no way around it. Why? Because the Federal Reserve 
and the banks, they don't want capitalism. You guys got to understand, they don't want capitalism. They're on the socialist system. Look, EVs, Walmart, Amazon, electric vehicles I'm talking about, the Teslas of the world, right? The Amazons, the Microsoft, the Walmarts, the auto industry, the airline industry, ladies and gentlemen, all these people get free money. That's printing money. We're, how do you, we're, we're the deficit. I'm exasperated by it. We're the deficit. So how, any money that you give these people, that means we're spending money we don't have. That means they actually are creating inflation every year, every month, every week. They didn't say, you know what? No subsidies coming. You guys got to function just like a mom and pop business. You make money, you make profits, you stay in business. If you don't, you got to go. Capitalists, right? So therefore, they have built in where there's inflation. The thing is, though, they tricked you. If you didn't grow up, and study economics, and you're only 30 years old, 20 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, you're not going to know nothing about that the inflation is fake. It's not really 8.3. Anything they tell you on the CPI index is really double. And then some. It's more like 16, 17, 20%, but they're not going to tell you that. You feel it when you go to the gas station, when you go to the grocery store, when you go out shopping, you know things aren't 10% more, 5% more. You know that 5% more is negligible. Something that costs $6, that would be only be $6.30. You wouldn't even care if that was $6 last year, $6.30. You'd be like, whatever. But you do notice it was $6 last year and now it's $8.99. That's clearly not 10%, right? So they fooled you into believing that inflation is what it is. It's lies. And then they're printing money not telling you another lie. So therefore, inflation is is already built in and it's going to increase. There's no, there's no, we're, it's not going to be no 2%. 1%, right? That's not going to happen. They won't stop printing money. They won't stop helping out their Wall Street buddies. They won't stop. So therefore, we have to prepare ourselves for it. That's why the global meltdown is going to happen. Every country has done this. They want to keep the oligarchs at the top. They don't want those guys melting down with the rest of us. They want to keep them up there. All right? Let's just call it what it is. All right, get on the bandwagon, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we need to protect ourselves. But hello, SSN family. Curtis Davis is in the house. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Financial, as he's known around here. And he says, hello, SSN family. He brought in the hello, SSN family part, his tagline. But the next part was ABMM, always be making money. We have to talk about always be making money. That's right. And speaking of always be making money, Curtis Davis has his own channel. He's known as Mr. Financial here. But on his channel, he's known as Chili Davis, C-H-I-L-O-Y Davis. He gives updates on the stock market and any other news throughout the day regarding financial information. And you might get information that can help you make an investment. Such as, if you're going to do any stocks, AGNC, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, AGNC. That's the one I've been promoting lately because it's at 12.5% roughly. Where else are you going to get 12.5% on your money where dividends are issued month after month after month? I'm just saying. Yes, it's a REIT, ladies and gentlemen, but it's one of the top dog REITs. So there you go. But go check out Chili Davis, C-H-I-L-O-Y Davis. Smash his like button, smash his subscribe buttons, and join over there too. Show him some love, please. The higher the floor, you need to add between 6K and 15K, depending on the floor. Wow. Wow. Well, this is great news for everybody that bought in the Galaxy, Victor Marrero. Victor Marrero, by the time they finish yours, your unit's going to be worth double. 440 is not out of the ballpark. Now, the question, though, remains, 
Uh, I'm just going to say it again. I, we have to keep transparent and fully transparent here. Remember, I'm going to say it again. In 2008, 2009, there was a boom in the DR also. And prices dropped just like the housing market. So once again, we could have the same effect. And what's going to end up happening, it coincided with completion of projects and the interest rates were double digits. So this could happen again because it's not a, a primary residence. So therefore the interest rates could be 12, 13%. So therefore everybody who bought a property under 250, you're gonna be good because even if you owe like 170, 150, at least if you're gonna pay double digits, at least, you know, you, you don't have to worry about, you can handle a thousand dollars or something because you're going to be renting it out every month. You should have a thousand coming in. So you won't be feeling too bad, but people who might've bought like a 400,000 and they got to pay 4,000 a month or 3,500, that might be a problem. All right. So just put it in perspective. Remember, there's a reaction to actions when it comes to money and finance. But that's awesome at the Galaxy. The Galaxy is pretty unique because I didn't know about that one pretty much. Um, facts. The government created most of the inflation, not the average OCs. Exactly, Chili Davis. All right. The CPI reports manipulated core inflation versus top line inflation. Rent increase not included. It's funny. Exactly. Rent increase not included. Gas they minimize. And they act like, I, I don't get it. Gas last year, let's say it was $3. This year, we knew it went up to, what, $5, $4, whatever the case may be. It's still 30%. If you go with gas, you go with rent, they're increased. People had their rents increased 30 40%. You go by those actual things. They don't even count those. They just go, ah, oh, no, nah, nah. We, we're not going to count those. We'll count something else. I'm just like, this is crazy. Because if they gave you the real numbers, you'd freak out. You'd be like, what? did they just say 25%? <laughs> What's going on? So back in the old days, that 30%, that 25%, that's all included. So when you go to shadowstats.com, I dropped a video about this. Was it yesterday or today? Shadow stats. In fact, let me pull this up. I'm going to show you guys something. Let's go to shadow stats inflation. Here it is right here. They're using the old 1980 model before 1980 model. And they bring up, here's what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. The red line is what they tell you today. This is what the government tells you is the red line. The red line, notice this is 5%, right? Or lower, all right? So remember, here we are down here in 2017, 2018, where they go, oh, yeah, it's only 2.1%. Really, it's more like 8, 9, 10%. Then notice right here, 2022, they're doing their thing. Oh, it's only 8%, 8.1, 8.5, 9.1. Really, it's 17, 18, 19, 20. And then if you've ever studied economics, then you would really know even this number from shadow stats is a little off because it's not taking into account some other data that they don't account for in the 1980s. And that has to do with the rents and the gas. So therefore, you start adding that up, we're over 20%, ladies and gentlemen. All right? So just get it in your head. There is no way you can come back from this. And the fact that the Federal Reserve, all they have is to increase interest rates and decrease interest rates, they're not doing anything. All they're doing is manipulating who's, who's going to borrow and how much you're going to blow up the bubble. That's all they're manipulating. They're they have to stall the economy in theory. It's all a theory. They stall the economy that's supposed to reduce. The reason why it's going to reduce inflation is because when you stall the economy, that means people are out of a job. And again, don't be caught by this. The global meltdown has begun. Due to the COVID scenario, we already lost 50, 60, 70 million people out of the workforce. We only had 150 to 185, 190 million Americans even working on the on the roll, so to speak. We lost 100 million people jobs wise during the COVID epidemic. 
out of the 100 million, that dropped us down to 50 million to 85 million. Roughly 20 to 30 million have jobs. So this other 50, 60 million jobs are not coming back. That's what happened. But they're not accounting for any of this. They're just rolling along because why? People have equity in their homes. They were able to borrow. You have credit cards. You're able to borrow and still buy. You gave stimulus money. You're able to borrow and use stimulus money and still buy. So the balloon just got bigger while they had the interest rate so low that those 20 million people, 30 million people that would be able to qualify to buy homes, they were buying them. And then Wall Street is buying homes. 15% of homes are owned by Wall Street, right? So they're able to get cheaper money, 2% loans, not even that. 1% loans, 0.5% loans, meaning 0.05% loans. I mean, this is crazy. So this is how you blow it up and then you have money flush out there. And so therefore you created inflation and now all of a sudden you're sitting there going, oh, I need to stall the economy. Well, stalling the economy means mom and pops are gonna be out of business. Now you're gonna be losing 20, 30 million jobs. And then you're gonna claim that you're gonna get these jobs back but i'm like of course you're going to have an increase in jobs if you lost 50 60 million jobs 300,000 500,000 600,000 okay if you're trying to get people back to work it's going to happen naturally but that has nothing to do with inflation ladies and gentlemen so when the federal reserve comes out here on next week about this time and they come out here and start talking about well the job market is all good they have nothing to do with the job market zero they don't go around going hey we have a million 25 dollar an hour jobs all right this is why we're having a global meltdown because they're bsing and not calling it what it is they don't create jobs they never did so for them to act like oh well we're worried about jobs i'm like you're not worried about jobs if you were you wouldn't be giving all this money to wall street you'd be giving it to mom and pops you'd be giving them loans at 0.05 that's what you would be doing instead you're giving the rich people loans of these zero percent damn near that's not what you would be doing you'd be giving it to mom and pops going hey we need you guys to employ 10 20 people so here's some money to make sure you can grow that's what you would be doing all right it would be totally reversed then you can claim you're helping jobs otherwise you're just talking bs all right, Jerome Powell, you can come on the channel anytime, my man. I'm not a financial advisor, but I can play one on YouTube. <laughs> it's not, it's a common sense, ladies and gentlemen, all right? And yeah, I did study economics, but I go from the old school economics, all right? Um, when they started changing things, I'm sitting there looking like, what are they doing? They're faking this. This is manipulation. The reason why they manipulate it is so they can print more money. So then they can make it seem like, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, it's only 2% inflation, 3% inflation. Don't worry until you have to worry. <laughs> and you're going to worry every 10 to 12, 13 years, like clockwork, because they're going to print up stuff for five, six, seven years, eight years. And that's when the balloon blows up because people get that cheap money. And then they have to rein it back in because all that cheap money is money supplies on the market. All right. So this is not turned into finance. CPI reports manipulated. Exactly. Our two bedroom unit on the fourth floor is now. Oh, I was right. 350 to 400. I was in the ballpark. So, yes, it looks it will be over 400 by closing time. Yes, exactly. I predict you're predicting. I'm predicting. I'm predicting the 450 range. 440 to 450. That's what I'm doing right there in that little sweet spot. Um, the only reason it won't get there is if we have a meltdown for real estate and we have situation where um, to get a loan is going to be freaking 13, 14 percent. That would be that's what's actually going to be the holdup, because when you start talking about uh, you're going to have to get a loan for 200. Well, not you, but some people in the new section or some people may still be getting them at 230 but some people are going to be like hey wait a minute um i owe 100 130 and what do you mean i got to get a 14 percent note 
So people are going to be like, that's $1,500 a month plus HOA, $2,000 a month potentially. That's up there if you only owe 140, 120K. That, that's pretty serious. Um, so then people are, and then you have to qualify. That means you got to make nine, 10 Gs per month too. So again, this could change things dramatically. Um, so we're going to find out later, but the property value for everybody who got in earlier, Victor Marrero is going to be like less than 30% LTV. So he's going to have options. He's going to be able to sit there and be like, okay, I don't need to pay full cash for this. I'll just go down and he could get a 1400 a month loan, 1300, 1200, or he can pay cash. But then again, it's always going to be a toss up. Should I spend this duffel bag of cash on something that's going to generate me the 10%, 12% annually for a while? Or should I dump it into this and get back whatever I get on my return on this investment? So it's a, it's a win either way, but at least you're in that position to win. But thank you so much, Victor Marrero, and congratulations, by the way. He's got a something that's going to be worth 400 and something, double the value. Uh, Wilson Coos in the house. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream with the icon next to his name. And he brings his tagline. Good evening, Mr. Bird and SSN fam, 100% facts. I sell money. If you need a loan, if you need funding, then you need to see Mr. Wilson Koo and go to Quick Easy Funds. Q-U-I-K-E-Z funds.com. We're almost in here. Two hours. Smash the like button. And if you need some funding, you can always send me a message at support at stopstrugglingnow.com. I will forward your information to Mr. Wilson Koo. All right. So hopefully that helps out for anybody that needs financing. And I mean, any type of financing that your heart desires. Just think about it's an open book. You're thinking, well, nobody's going to give me funding for that. You never know. That's why you need to get in contact with Mr. Wilson Koo, because he does the unthinkable. He has programs for damn near everything. It's unbelievable what's happened. And you're going to have to make moves now because there's going to start being restrictions. In, the, in fact, the restrictions have probably already started. But after the next week, when he officially does the 0.75, restrictions are going to start setting in big time. So just keep that in mind because they're going to be a home mortgages that are going to be over 7%. All right. Evening at Victor M. Monty Val, Vanessa K. Laverne P. All right. That's what we're talking about. And much love in the house. And Vanessa Comma Gate. Hey, cool man. And Chili D. Showing nothing but love. We like that. We continue to print money. Everything you mentioned earlier. And now we could get Tab to pay for all these student loan forgiveness, at least 10K a pop. Uh, yeah, exactly. But that's 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 minor. 300, 360 billion. I'm not even mad at that because here's my thing. Let me, let me explain. Um, there's something to me, this, this is a, this student loan thing is like BS. When I, and I don't mean BS in a bad way. I want all student loans to be paid. Here's my problem. I want the equivalency. If you're going to be given Elon Musk, Amazon, the wall street gang and Microsoft and Nvidia, and Oracle, I mean, if you're going to give all these guys a, a hundreds of billions of dollars in tax incentives, which means we're the taxpayer, we're paying for it, then I'm down with you saying we're going to give $300 billion to wipe off freaking fake money. And now notice I said fake money. So here's what I'm saying. You have a student loan. Student loan you got for, let's say, $5,000. You weren't able to pay the student loan. Your student loan now is $10,000, $15,000 because they added the interest. So that's what I mean. The interest is fake money. So therefore, $10,000 of a $15,000 loan to me, I'm just like, okay, so the person got back to where they started. So to me, I don't equate that with, with giving out real money to the Walton family of $6.82 billion a year just because they have a Walmart store that makes billions of dollars in profit. That makes no sense. 
their workers are down getting welfare because they don't want to pay their workers a living wage. That is crazy to me. That's crazy. They're giving Elon Musk and all the EV makers now a discount. They're giving them a tax credit. We're now us as a citizen who's going hoo hoo hooray, $7,500 off because we bought an EV, but except one problem, you're the taxpayer, you're paying for it. That's, that's free money. I don't, you see what I'm saying? So there's a difference. I'm giving billionaires free money, but the money's being taken from us, the bottom 70%. The top one percenters own 50% of the wealth in America. Combined, the lower 50% combined, they own as much as the 50%, us OCs combined, the top 1%, but they're the ones getting the free money. 175, let's just break it down, 175 million people make as much as 4,000 people. I'll repeat this. 175 million people have as much wealth as 4,000 people. Now, that's how much wealth we have combined. These same one percenters that own these companies, taxpayers are giving them tax breaks, tax credits, paying subsidies. What the hell is going on? And you imagine, now you understand why there's a meltdown. They have uh, put the uh, wealth of the nation is in the hands of the few. You have oligarchs here, but you don't call them that. And that's why we're going to have a meltdown. Because soon as the people don't have a job, don't have taxes that they can pay these one percenters and give them their free money, that means they're going to print up more money, which is what they're doing now. So there's a wheel that's going on all over the world. They're doing this to everybody. Every country is doing it pretty much. So therefore, we have a global meltdown. And you got to understand, this is why you have to protect yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You're not going to be able to rely. We're in a capitalist system. The bottom 50%, 75%, we're in the capitalist system. We fend for ourselves. That stimulus money they gave out is similar to what they're giving to corporations and top one percenters for their companies. That's what they're getting, except times it by 100000 All right? A $1,200 stimulus, really. A ten, a thousand dollar stimulus. These guys are getting billions of dollars. One company, one individual with stocks. Think about it. This is why we have a meltdown. All right. But that ten k a pop, I don't, I don't, I'm not even mad. You know why? Because this is education. We wouldn't have a lot of people that don't understand what the government's doing. You would have more educated individuals that would be like, whoa, wait a minute. You're lying to us. We don't approve of this. And then maybe you would vote a little differently to stop some of this madness. You would start saying, OK, what laws can we implement so we can stop some of this? Because most people don't understand what's going on, but yet they go, we live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, you think? You think also why they would said, hey, $600 so they can track people under certain circumstances? So they can get more money from you, the ordinary citizen. But yet they're only going to tax these guys 15% on their company. But you're not going to do anything about the loopholes that they have. So I can keep it in stock and then I can borrow against my stock. And then when I pay back my stock, you can't tax me. So I have free money for life. So I don't have to pay taxes. Right? That's what's really going on. And then we're paying for them to have free money. And then they're going to print money. I mean, this just is a cycle. So once you understand what's happening, now all of a sudden you're like, hold on, I got to be against anybody that's going to be telling me that I got to give the top one percenters who own 50% of the wealth in the country, I'm going to give them more free money. If you're signing up to give them more free money, I got to vote against you. You, you. I don't agree with this. You should be give. if you're going to give billions of dollars away, 
you need to start handling it. Give it to break out some more stimulus money then. All right. It's still going to end up to the top 10 percenters just in a different form. All right. That's all that happens. You're going to buy their products. You're going to buy their stock. They're still going to end up with the money. But at least the other people have a choice versus when you get paid, the FICA is already taken out and you're sitting there like, damn, do these guys really take 20, 23%, 24% out? Oh, and damn, I wanted to put in like 5% of that money going to my 401k. So there's 30% gone on my money. And then they're going to tax me on the other side. This is crazy. They're not walking up to you saying, hey, here's your 0.05% interest, 0% loans. You don't get that luxury. So all I'm saying, I, I'm down with free education. Every developed nation except America has free education. You should be thinking about this. America, uh, GDP wise, what are we? We're number one or two in the world. We spend $770 billion on the military industrial complex, more than the top 10 countries combined. But those same top 10 countries combined behind us, seven of them, their education is free for their citizens. They pay less in military aid and have free education. Oh, and a few have free health care as well for their citizens. But yet America doesn't. That should tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The money flow isn't proper, all right? So that's why there's a global meltdown. You need to protect yourself in all those ways, guns, grub, finance, and you have to figure out, like Victor Morrell said, hello, Wilson, he said, He's banging it with Hector. He left his money in with Hector, making it work for itself. We're taking a chance. We don't know how this crypto is going to end up. Just like the Node Project, we're taking a chance. We are taking calculated risk. If these things work out and they generate rewards, now we have conquered everything in case of a global meltdown. So that global meltdown, you're going to need the guns. You're going to need the stored food. You're going to need some way of generating revenue. And if everything's out of circulation, meaning electricity is gone and you have no internet, how are you going to do it? Well, you're better hopes you have these nodes up because you better hope you have something that's generating some rewards. And remember, crypto, you can be anywhere. As long as you can get on the internet, you can use it, right? So you can transfer it. You'll be able to use it. You'll be able to do some things. So if you're not on the internet, then you're still going to have a problem because you won't be able to get to crypto without internet. Unless you have your wallet. Now you have your own bank with you. You're not on the exchange. Right? Which is another thing altogether. Or like we were saying earlier, in case you came late, Open up a bank account. When you travel outside the country, you always go to the bank and say, hey, I'm a U.S. citizen. Can I open up a bank account? Even if it's 20, 50 bucks, you need a bank account, alternative options. All right. That's what you should consider next time you leave the country. Doesn't even matter if you go to Caribbean, wherever you go, you always go in the bank and be like, hey, I'm a U.S. citizen or whatever citizen you are. Hey, I need to open up a bank account here. How much? And make sure you get your debit card, right? Because in that way, if anything ever happens in the country you reside in, you at least have kibbles and bits around and you'll be able to have a banking source outside of uh, whatever jurisdiction you're in or country you're in. So just keep those things in mind. This is very serious. Even though I'm sounding a little more serious, you can see where there could be meltdowns. You could see where there might be mobs. You could see where food might not be on the shelf. You can understand all of this. It's happening. You can understand there's rolling blackouts in a few states as we speak. Um, California is telling people, hey, don't plug in your EV. What the heck? This is crazy. Don't plug in your EV. This is <laughs> in Nevada, Arizona, Colorado. Hey, don't water your lawn. Don't use too much water. We have curfew days. 
I mean, this is getting crazy. Anything can happen. So you never know. So protect yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Wilson, welcome back. All right, Mr. Cole Hard Facts. It's okay to print, but let the OCs know the flip side. Exactly, exactly. And they hide, they keep hiding it, but more and more people are getting smarter because we have the internet. There are people on YouTube that explain what's going on. Those talking heads at CNBC and all the financial news networks, remember, they're double-sided, all right? One hand, they make money from the stock market or from the markets. On the other hand, they don't want to tell you bad news because they need you to invest. So they minimize the bad news, making it seem like, oh, but there'll be a turnaround. Don't worry about it. Well, when's that going to happen? One year, two years, five years, or is this the Great Depression stuff where we got to wait 10 years? So all I'm saying is that's why you need to put yourself in a space no matter what happens regarding anything, you can subside, uh, su sustain yourself, and everything will be fine. That's what you need to think about, ladies and gentlemen. Next thing I want to find out is how many owners have already paid cash. I heard it's around 70%, which is very good. You can probably find out the same thing with your units. Ah, no, I can't. These guys at Panorama, which is Epic Ventures, these guys, man, I got to send them messages, and then I got to go through lawyers. I got to go through, man, it's ridiculous how they're handling Panorama. That's why you don't see too many videos unless like Mr. and Mrs. Cool go over to the DR and they go, hey, here's what's happening. They, these guys are light with the information. I keep asking, hey, what's going on with the 7 percent, 10 percent? What's going on? They're like, oh, no, no, no. We're not. Nothing's happening. I'm like, OK, but you already did it with Panorama Lake. What are you, what are you talking about? They won't give up no info. Got to go through a, a lawyer. I mean, they got like a block. It's crazy. I'm not too happy with those guys at all. Good evening, Mr. Koo from Mr. Cool. All right. Schools have inflated price since they had free money from government. The students shoulder the burden. Exactly, Curtis Davis. Exactly. Exactly. Schools used to be 300, 200, 100, damn near free in America. Let's say 60s and 70s. Then... When the government said, oh, we can monetize this, the schools go, ho, ho, we can monetize this. So instead of $300, it's $3,000 a year. Instead of $3,000 a year, hold on. These guys are giving us these great loans. It's $5,000 a year. Instead of five, it's 20. This is insane. For the same school, same everything, except now they monetize the students because it's guaranteed. It's, it's a travesty without a guarantee of a job. That's the worst part. They're having people pay $10,000, $15,000, $5,000 per year, $20,000 per year. And if you stay there four years, they go, here's your diploma. Have a nice life. And you're like, wait, what? Do, do I have that seventy, eighty, dollars $100,000 a year job or more? What do you mean? Oh, no, you got to go, go, go apply. You should be good, though. <laughs> and then, like I always say, if you're a student here, I'm just going to burst your bubble right now. So you go to school for four or five or six or seven years. What you never think about when you get your diploma is how many people graduated with you in your degree field. And then you don't think about, wait, how many actual people graduated this year in the summer in my field around the country? How many people graduated in the fall or the spring or winter? Wait a minute. It's not only a few thousand. It's a few million. And guess what? There's not a few million jobs available in your field. A few thousand, maybe but not millions. So now you have all these people with this piece of paper and they're going, man, I got the baddest degree. I did all this stuff in school. I did extracurricular. I got all this and that and got all my ducks in a row. And you're like getting there to go to interviews and you're like, there's another 20 people waiting. I mean, it's, it's, it's disheartening, right? 
So you never think about this while you're getting that paper, while you're spinning. Now, if you're going to go to one of the big boys, let's just call it what it is. If you are able to go to the Yales, the Princetons, Georgetowns, USC, UCLA, Berkeley, Stanford, Harvard, Columbia, there's a select few schools. There's about 15 of them. Penn, U of Penn. If you can go to like these 15 top schools, if you're good enough to go there, then you got big time options. Because, you know, you'll find yourself at Goldman Sachs, maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying. They pick from a different litter. And your sphere of influence isn't ordinary citizens. A lot of people that go there, not all, but a lot, are people that are in the top 10% of the wealthiest in America and around the world. They send their kids there. So now your friends who are actually real friends and you guys don't care because you're students, everybody lives in the dorm, everybody eats dorm restaurant food, you all party in the same. So there's no criteria on levels. You just know, okay, that's the ambassador's kid. Cool. Or that's uh, the, you know, some kid that their parents is a CFO or COO that you see on TV or CEO. But you guys are friends. You're not friends with their parents. You don't even know their parents, but you have a relationship. So now when these guys go out and they get a job, they tell you, hey, man, we got a job opening over here for 150 K a year. You need to come over here and apply. And I know these guys. So that gives them an end. There's a different ecosystem than when you graduate from Sonoma U, right? So me, graduate from Sonoma State, right? Um, different than University of Florida, which I did not graduate from, right? So those are two different schools, even though University of Florida is on nobody's scholar, you know, scholar list. But all I'm saying is it's a bigger school. They have bigger alumni. They have more people that are in the top 10% of the wealthiest than from at Sonoma State, which is a smaller school, about a fifth of the size, right? So you have a different ecosystem. Now, I will give you an ecosystem. Speaking of schools, I guess I, I'll get into this. Here's the ecosystem at Sonoma State, though. So it's a smaller school, not one of the heart, not Stanford, not Berkeley, right? Not USC, not none of that. But get this. In uh, Marin County, which at one time was the richest county in America, guess what? The trust fund kids all live in that county. Their parents are CEO, CEOs of Levi's, CEO of, you know, Hewlett Packard. That's kids. You know what I'm saying? The Bay Area, that's those companies, Oracles and all those guys, their kids are living in the Bay Area. A lot live in Marin County. Sonoma State's a little ways up from there. Guess what? Those kids are going to our school. Some of them go to our school. So we have trust fund kids going to our school. So now, even though you go to a small school, you are involved with other people who now you're like one of those big time schools. So you get a job, Hewlett Packard. You can get a job, Levi's. You get a job like that, that's going to pay a nice salary. So that was one of the benefits that turns out to be a benefit, but it wasn't like going to the actual USC's or anything like that, Berkeley's, Stanford's, Yale, Harvard, and all these guys. So that's why school is very, very interesting. And that's also why you want to go to a school that is in a certain ecosystem because that gives you more options. But a lot of schools aren't in that, don't even get in that option. Okay, how do we make it fair across the board? How about those people that work three jobs to pay their loans? Okay. Or the one that served in the military to pay for it. Should they be reimbursed too? No, Victor Morero. Sorry. No. That's not how America works. Just like we don't give a damn that you give the Walmart people $6.82 billion. Same thing. Same thing. You Just like you don't care that we give the airline industry billions of dollars a year. You're not reimbursing no American citizens for this. American citizens are paying taxes for it. So no, I don't have an equal. I don't look at it as equal. I look at it as good for them. Good for them. That's the way I look at it. I'm like, I'm glad they got it. That's the way I look at it. I don't look at it as equilibrium. The day that 
they say, hey, we're not going to um, we're not going to bail out a bank. We're not going to bail out the airlines. We're not going to bail out the auto industry. The days they do that, then somebody can come and ask me, what do I think about these other people that paid? I'm like, we've always paid. That's why you pay taxes. That's why you pay taxes for schools and, and fire and police and, you know, the IRS. And, you know, I mean, so there's no equivalent. All I'm saying is I would rather pay somebody that's getting their education. That I'd rather pay education than just to give people free money because they own a company or just to bail out somebody because they're too big to fail. Even though they failed. <laughs> I mean, a person went to school trying to better themselves. These guys who are getting bailed out, they failed already and still getting bailed out. And we're paying the bill for it. And it's not $10,000. That's the problem. We're giving out trillions. That's the problem. So I can't go with these other people. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. And furthermore, it's $10,000. First of all, any four-year school costs more than $20,000. First of all. So that doesn't even cover the full amount. That's the first thing. Second thing, not everybody gets 20. Some get 10, some get five. You have to jump through hoops. But these other guys who get trillions of dollars don't have to jump through nothing. They just have a company. That's it. I mean, that's, that's crazy to me. So I don't, I don't look at it as a certain way. I look at it as if a person's trying to better themselves and you want to give them $20,000 off of their education, two thumbs up. Everybody else who had to work hard for it, so be it. I got to work hard when I run my companies. They're not handing me any money. I'm sitting there because that same equivalent would be, okay, so you're giving Elon Musk $7,500 and all the other EV makers $7,500 tax credit for the people, which actually comes out of our pocket, right? Ultimately, it's got to be reimbursed. I'm, you're not giving any other businesses tax credit so they can sell their gear right so i'm like i i can't i don't i'm not even doing false equivalents like that to me a person's trying to better themselves it should be given to the people and school should be free anyhow just because i had to pay for school or parts of school in one instance and not parts in another that's great but the fact of the matter is anybody else who does it i don't really care other people had to pay just like you got to pay you pay more taxes depending on what state you live in, right? When you start doing this, this is where I come from, Victor Morrell. When, you, when I start looking at that, I sit there and I go, hey, you know, how is it that Florida can have a 0% state income tax? How is it that Texas can have zero state income tax and Nevada? And how is it that the federal government sends them money? Where does the federal government get that money from? Well, you know, they charge people 10% state tax in California. California sends the federal government money from the backs of the workers in California. New York charges tax. New York is sending the federal government money. The federal government takes that money and sends it to, oh, I don't know, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, so when you start thinking like that, that's exactly where I come from. I'm like, that ecosystem has already set sail. There's people that pay taxes in states that's funding other states that pay less taxes or no taxes. So that's the way I look at this. There's always been this situation in America where they're exploiting somebody, all right? So when there was Indians, slaves which were slaves were indians black people africans asians you enslave people that was cheap labor that was china america was china three four five hundred years ago pay people zero to a little bit of nothing so therefore on the backs of other people they were able to build the nation now so when we start talking about, hey, uh, we're taking ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars off, spending three hundred ninety or three hundred sixty billion for these people that have student loans, I'm like, hold on, that ain't enough. 
How about we give them $2.3 trillion tax cut tax break, except we give it to the people that's going to school. And oh, by the way, you don't need $2.3 trillion to get free education. It's less than that. I'm just saying. So when we start talking these numbers and moving money around, I would all day, every day, give it to somebody that's trying to improve themselves versus giving it to the guys that own 70% of all the wealth in America and we're going to bail them out. That doesn't make sense to me. So that's where I come from with that. Okay, or better yet, I busted my butt to pay for my kids' college so they didn't have to get a loan. Okay, do I get reimbursed too? No, you don't get reimbursed at all. You, you don't have a balance. Can you see how this can get complicated? No. All I'm saying is to be fair across. Victor Marrero, you're not being fair across. That's my point. So when my point is, fairness would be you don't bail out nobody. You don't give any um, uh, subsidies to nobody. That would be fair to me. The fact that you're taking my tax money and then throwing it up in the air like you just don't care and burning it and then telling me, oh, it's good for us that we give these billionaires tax cuts and tax breaks. It's good for us that we give them subsidies. It's good for us that you know, you're paying for police, fire and all this because you need protection. So when you, when they start telling me bank goes out of business, we're going to bail them out. Autos are going out of business. We're going to bail them out. I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? That when, when you stand up for that and say everything wrong with that, then we can start talking about 20 G's for students. We got other fish to fry right now. We got, we got, <laughs> we got, Billions of dollars being given to companies that make billions in profit. We got to shut that down. I mean, that should be your first thing. If you don't want to shut it, the first you keep doing, if people are saying we don't care about tax cuts and tax breaks, we don't care about giving EV makers $7,500 tax credits that the American people are going to pay while you're busting your butt, by the way. It gets very complicated from the standpoint of we can just wipe this all clear, play by the same rules for everybody. But I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, we spent three hundred and sixty billion dollars to help out. I don't know how many thousands of people potentially get ten thousand dollars knocked off of their bill. That's a far cry from giving a family that makes one hundred billion dollars a year another seven billion dollars just for the hell of it. That's the Walton family I'm talking about. So, I mean, this is crazy. In fact, um, in fact, that's not all. So when when we're sitting here, when we're sitting here talking about gas prices that went up and people started blaming a president. Here's the situation right here. Are you going to are you going to tell me? Look, this is right here. Oil puts a total of around 20 billion annually. Federal subsidies, 5.8 billion at the state level. That's 20 billion dollars. They're getting an oil. This is oil. We haven't even got to natural gas yet. This is 20. So we're talking about trillions of dollars that these guys are. So these guys get subsidies. They turn around and charge me an extra $2 a gallon because they can. Americans are so silly that they go, oh, the president did it. I'm sitting there going, first of all, they get subsidies to begin with from our tax dollars that we're working hard for. And at the same time, they turn around and do this. And do this. 35 billion profits in just three months. Shell, Exxon, BP, Chevron, Conoco, Phillips in the first quarter of 2021. 200% more in profits. But yet we're paying taxes, but yet they're not dropping their price on the gas. So when you start saying it's a slippery and complicated, I'm like, yeah, it's complicated. All right, because you're paying for this. 
this $35 billion. Well, that's their profit. But you're paying the $20 billion from your taxes is going to these companies who now when we go drive our cars up the price one, two to three dollars a gallon. And then people around the United States is going, oh, yes, yeah, the president's fault. And I'm like, what are you talking about? These companies decided to make more money than they've ever made. That's whose fault it is. They're the ones gouging you. It's not a, a president doesn't dictate oil prices unless you make a deal with uh, Saudi Arabia or Russia and tell them to cut oil. Now that will have a problem, Eric. That'll be a problematic situation. And we did have a president that did that. He went over and said, oh, I'm making this deal with you because our oil went to zero. So if our oil goes to zero, which everybody knows what happened, then they tried to prop up the oil prices. So they said, hey, Russia, you guys, we're going to make a deal till April 2022. Cut the oil. Cut the distribution of oil right now. We need the price to go up. The U.S. oil company said, thank you so much. We needed that cut of oil because we need an excuse to raise the oil prices. So when we start getting into how things are manipulated, hell yeah, give these dudes a trillion dollars. Give them whatever they want so their school is not burdensome to them, so they can get a house, so they can get a job because now their credit isn't jacked up. Yeah, I'm down with giving the students their 10 Gs, 20 Gs, whatever they can get, I'm down. Because we're the American citizens are given states, cities, countries, corporations, money, and you don't have no problem with it. Zero problems. And so you need to start waking up American citizens. And then therefore, you know what's in your best interest. So what's not in your best interest is when we're paying these companies. I just showed you the oil. They're getting 20 billion. Airlines are getting some money. They're getting billions. All right. The gas industry is getting billions. They're making pr record profits. And who pays for those subsidies? We are. So all that hard work we're talking about. And when we're starting a business, they don't bring us any help. But they'll still take the tax money if we make money. All right. So just keep that in. mind. That's all I'm trying to say. This is a sore subject matter for me because in America, it seems like people have blinders on. And this is part of education because they don't real American citizens don't realize that sales tax and where it goes, that tax that they pay to the IRS. They don't realize where that goes. They don't understand where part of their FICA goes. They don't understand it's all off of your back that they're giving out this free money. And then on the other side of it, they don't have the free money to give. So they steal money from the Social Security Fund. Use that a safety net for the people that you put money in, by the way, they steal that. Then they turn around and say, okay, we stole as much as we can right now, but now we're going to actually give them money that we don't have as well. And who's going to pay for this money that we don't have is you and your grandkids and your great grandkids. So once you understand that system, then you're like anybody that stands up and starts going, we need to bail them out. We need to pay off their stuff. I'm like, who are we talking about? Pay off whose stuff? Oh, you know, those guys that own these companies and corporations on Wall Street. I'm like, no, 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 cut that. Capitalist system. No, no, no. So I'm not coming back later going, I'm not going to pay student loan debt. I'm not coming back later either saying we can't help the homeless. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying, hey, where's that? Where's the 500 billion for the homeless? Hey, where's those tiny houses that you can be building? If we start doing all this, I don't need to send those guys 20 billion. They're, this is a capitalist system. I'll send them guys 20 billion over here to build tiny homes in every city and give me about a couple of thousand of those. Come on. Remember, you give out that free land to these corporations. Why don't you give me free acreage for people to live on? Temporarily, if it has to be. So, see, we start getting complicated when we start talking about giving away money. And I, when we start talking about trillions of dollars that they give away already, and yet you won't spend even one tenth of that to help out American citizens. That's crazy to me. That's where I come from. I feel like we are nearing in like Blade Runner, Mad Max, all geeks will navigate Bitcoin, online money, a collapse. There we go. This is why all of these guys are getting into crypto right now. All right. 
two hours, 34 minutes in, and we're talking about the demise of capitalism, so to speak. Actually, capitalism's always been dead because you can always get loans, right? Unfortunately, capitalism is in books. It's not in practice. Um, only geeks will navigate Bitcoin. And again, that's why you have to be a geek, ladies and gentlemen. Guns, grub, finance, knowledge actually helps you maneuver. Without knowledge, you can't maneuver. Without information to do something and setting yourself up in the motion, then you won't be able to do anything. So this is why um, uh, we talked about finance and talked about Bitcoin. It's cross-border. They can't block it. That's why I told you about this, uh, the, uh, uh, the online poker and casinos and gambling and the United States blocking. If there, and that's why um, I learned about Bitcoin then in the late two, 2000s is because when they blocked, even though I didn't have a problem with the block until they actually blocked NetTeller and there's another company too, started with a P, I can't remember. Um, but anyhow, they blocked them. So then the guys go, ha we have Bitcoin. So then you could send Bitcoin to online poker rooms, but it took a time. You had to send it, they would verify it and they would tell you. This is why I have Bitcoin sitting somewhere <laughs> that I can't find. It's gone. It's sitting because like I told you guys, I bought $10 worth to test it out. And all I know is I bought $10 and I got some numbers and that's all I can remember. It was a while back. And um, so then I tried to send the money, this $10 loaded up to the poker room. The poker room had this thing saying, oh, we charge like, 20% or something. I didn't really care. It was a test. So I sent it or couldn't send it. I think it was I couldn't send it, couldn't figure out how to send. So then that $10 worth of Bitcoin is sitting somewhere. And again, it's somewhere like single digits, meaning single digits like three cents, six cents, under 10 cents is what it was. All right. Just to give you guys an idea. So it's sitting somewhere. And sure, I went to my friend's Looked through all my hard drives, didn't find it, couldn't find it. But I did find something that um, that kind of uh, reminded me of how the transaction went. It was sent on bit on PayPal. It was sent to somebody on PayPal. Then the PayPal guy um, sent me back a code and uh, how much in Bitcoin ever it was, $10 as far as I'm concerned. And um, he gave me a code. Back then it meant nothing. And it was worth nothing, $10. So that's why it wasn't like I put it in a safe and kept it for life. I just, whatever. $10, not going to be used. Can't load up to the poker room. F it. Okay, I'll use my uh, net teller account and I'll use my other account that started with a P. I got money. And I had money on poker rooms anyhow, so I didn't really need to do too much. So it really didn't affect me until net teller all of a sudden is like, uh, you got to get your money now. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to take it off. And I was like, unless you come over here. I'm like, damn, okay. Demolition man type stuff in California, the underground people versus civil society. Demolition man is exactly what this could be. That's exactly what it could be. Remember when he went to the machine and started taking money out the ATM or whatever it was? That was funny stuff. Curtis D, thanks. Nice to be able to drop in Wilson Koo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I had to go off. It's a, it's a passion of mine. This is why I started Stop Struggling Now because of this subject matter that um, Victor Morero brought up. And most people don't understand that you're paying as a tax as an, a United States citizen, being able to be taxed all over the world from any income coming in, you are contributing to these subsidies. You're contributing to the, the, the bailouts. You're contributing to school, fire, police, county, um, uh, gas, water, sewer, all that you're contributing to one way or another from sales taxes, from registering your vehicle, all that you're contributing. And it's more than 20% <laughs> after you start really adding up all the stuff that you're paying towards. And so they're taking that money and then using that money that you're giving them and giving it to their friends. They're not sitting there going, they are having the, 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 uh, the police, the fire, the waste management, they have all that, but you're paying for waste management. You pay them monthly. So 
Now what happens when a tree falls down on the street, you got people to come pick it up, right? So all of that is paid for out of tax money or sales tax money, one way or another, or state tax money, and there's still not enough money. So in California, you add on an extra, look, 10% of 10% starts adding up. I don't care. I don't care how you call it. And when you're registering vehicles for $300, $500, $700—registration for a car. And then you got two or three of them, and you're spending two G's, $1,500, $1,000 to register cars. That's crazy to register. Then they tell you you got to go get smog. Okay. Oh, you're special. You're you're special. You got to go to one of them gold standards. Instead of paying twenty five dollars for smog, you got to pay sixty five or seventy dollars for smog. So after at the end of the day, it starts getting crazy. So yeah, I'm not gonna bitch if somebody's getting a uh, free ride in their student loan program. And as we all know, not everybody has the same job. Not everybody gets paid the same. Not everybody is successful. So therefore, um, that's how the cookie crumbles in America. It's always been number one is not looking out for everybody else. So I'm down with that. I got to repeat. I'm down. I'm down. Down. In most states, 2022, the high school are claiming career ready or college bound ready mandatory. But in New York and Florida, it's been the norm for the last four years. Yep. But uh, Florida, they, they got interesting scenarios there. Exactly. 10K is a drop in the bucket. Exactly. And you still have to qualify for it. It's not. Here's my thing. Here, here's my thing. So when we do these bailouts and all the banks show up and be like, hey, man, the sky is falling. We need a big bailout. They don't sit there and say, hold on now. When when did you do all this? stuff? We need you to fill out all this stuff here. We need you to also you know, apply at this website and do all this hoop jumping. No, they don't do none of that. This is crazy. This is crazy. But yet the student thing is not going, hey, we're just going to wipe clear 10,000 off of every student stuff. No, 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 no. We can't do that. We got to make you go to a website. We got to make you jump through some hoops. And some of you might not know how to fill it out or might not even know it exists. So all I'm saying is it's a whole different ball game when we start doling out money. I just don't like it. Facts. They want to pit people against each other. But what about those big corporations? Exactly, Vanessa Comigate. Exactly. It's, it's out of control. It's out of control. You know, I mean, sheesh. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is, this is crazy. Amazon. Um. I'm going to put this in here since we're talking about it. Amazon. I, I, I had to put in uh, subsidies. It's, it's $4.7 billion. All right. And counting, apparently. So this is what I'm saying. $4.1 billion supported Amazon projects in the United States. Remember when Amazon wants to go get a new headquarters in a certain state? What do they get? They don't get the subsidy. They already got the 4.1 or 4.7 billion. Are they counting a subsidy such as, oh, we're going to give you free land? Oh, by the way, you don't have to pay taxes for 30 years. Who pays their taxes? The people in their jurisdiction. Hey, Victor Morrell, speaking of that, remember when DeSantis didn't like a uh, an opinion by uh, Disney that said that, well, we didn't we don't like your LBQT stance? And then DeSantis says, ah, I'm going to pull your, your, your tax. He was thinking they had a tax credit. He didn't realize it was not a tax credit. It was a tax, as you very well know, in the county of where Disney is, they were actually paying the citizens tax portion of the tax. So it was reverse. So again, Disney was sitting there paying taxes for the citizens 
DeSantis yanks it. Now all the citizens could be on the hook for thousands of dollars per year. And by the way, notice they had an opinion, which is a fascist situation. I didn't like your opinion, so I'm going to try and punish you. They have a right to an opinion in a free America, right? So is America really free? But that's a whole nother thing. The meltdown has begun. People are doing these things, pitting against other people for opinions. Not even us did anything, just had an opinion. I disagree with you. That's it. So now citizens in Orlando area could be paying thousands in taxes. A total reverse of what normally happens. Normally, the citizens would have paid thousands in taxes for giving Disney a tax credit for bringing all the jobs. That's normally what would happen. So I'm like, this is baffling why somebody would do that and then jack their citizens. It's crazy. But all I'm trying to illustrate with that is it's reversed most of the time. Disney moves into an area. They get tax cuts, don't have to pay taxes for 30, 40 years, potentially. That's how it goes now. Back in the day, it was the right way. It's a capitalist system. You're building this thing. You're bringing jobs. That's cool. Here's our agreement. You're paying the tax. You're the one disrupting our environment around here. You're the one reason why we need to build new roads. You're the one that why we need to build new sewer lines and new water lines and upgrade our water pressure and electricity needs and output and why we got to build a new uh, electrical plant over here. You need to pay for that. Our citizens shouldn't pay for that. Welcome to capitalism. I'm down with that. That's how it should be. This stuff about companies should not have to pay for stuff because they're going to give a few thousand jobs potentially. F that. I'm just saying I have a, a dramatic difference. I believe in capitalism. I don't believe in this crap going on. You know, that's how it should be. Just like the Disney program was. You want us to build an infrastructure for you? Hell no. Our citizens aren't paying for that. You are. Forget that. And then they say, well, now Disney said, I don't care. We'll pay for it. I don't. Why would he care? We in a capitalist system. The public schools are a scam. Hey, I don't have know what to tell you about that. The education are watered down in most districts. In most poor states or urban school, only secret in U.S. private school. But you pay 20K extra per year. See, Curtis Davis, you're getting you're, you're starting to get on my nerves. Again, you guys know I get lit up about this. This is why I start, started the channel, Stop Struggling Now. It's not you're getting on my nerves as you would think. What I'm saying is he's bringing up things that drives me crazy. So now we have a, a certain factions of our government sitting there trying to get all schools under a charter school program. I wonder why there's going to be a charter school program. Do you think they might get money from the state government and the federal government? Yeah, I think so, too. So they want to try and get charter schools so then they can have uh, schools designed under no rule of public education so they can do their own educational system. And they can also bring in students that they want to bring in. Allah, I'm going to give you guys an example. Here's something for you. In the state of Florida, I'm picking on Florida tonight. In the state of Florida, there's a school in Fort Pierce that's called Lincoln Park Academy. Lincoln Park Academy, just so we have it all, so everybody understands, is in the black side of town, all right? You know, it's Southern cities, they separate, you know, generally. Lincoln Park Academy, for the last 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, was the tops, one of the top educational high schools in all of Florida. But it's on the black side of town. So you know what they do? The city, which is obviously not run by the black side of town, first they try to remove it as the high school and turn it into a middle school. The people that lives on that side of town said, eh, no, no, no. We're not falling for that. Sorry, we got history. We're the baddest, the best educational school, one of them in the state year over year. History shows we're down. They said, okay, we'll build another school. They did. Now, 
because that school has the academic chops for the last 60 years, you know what happens? Charter school. Guess what? The kids that live on the black side of town, they can't go to the charter school. Even though they live less than one mile from the school, less than two miles from the school, less than three miles from the school. Most people that go to that school now live 20, 30, 40 miles away. They bring their kids there. Now the school is not black. They have less than probably 20 black students, all the rest white students. When they did the charter school thing, they had the pedigree for the academics. You graduate from that school at the top of your class. You have scholarships. You're going to one of the big time schools. You graduate from that school, period. It has a lot of weight. They turned it into a charter school. The kids in the neighborhood, they have to be on the waiting list from the time they're born and they still won't get in. That is why they're trying to do charter schools. So you can block people and you get funding from the states instead of funding from the local area and you can block people. So when somebody starts doing this charter school stuff, all right, and by the way, the Voss family, you might not know who they are, but at one time they, uh, they're part of the Amway dynasty owns part of the Orlando Magic. Um, they go around the country trying to get their schools to be charter schools because they own and process a lot of charter schools. So therefore, they're going to have funding from states and funding from guess who? You, ladies and gentlemen, public Funding comes from you for charter schools and you're going to pay for schools in the first damn place. But yet they're over there picking up the better schools, taking over their legacies and then stopping people who live in the neighborhood from going there. Because, as you know, if you already live on the black side of town and you already have the legacy school and you graduate at the top of the class or with a very well, very good student, you're going to be accepted around the country but if you're a minority now you have less minorities being able to get into that they got to go to another school that's not even in their neighborhood that's like four miles away because that's a public school four miles away that's crazy stuff right there systemic and i hate to say it but i have to call it what it is systemic racism so when somebody starts doing this charter school stuff this is what happened with my daughters at sack high all of a sudden, they're like, ah, we got to change it to a charter school. Same stuff. Same situation. All right. So I'm just saying this, this just when so when we start, that's what I mean by he got me all hot and bothered when he starts talking about this public school scam system. It exists, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the stuff that's wrong with America right now. And everybody's just glossing over. it. They're just like, oh, yeah, we're worried about this funding for this. But meanwhile, these dudes are out here trying to create a charter school so they can get federal and public funding and then stop people from being able to go to their own school in their own neighborhood. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. We need to start teaching what money is. It's man-made construct. There you go. Psychological. The banks, government, create fiat, then choose whoever deserves it or not. Exactly. Or go back to barter trade system. Oh, my. Barter trade system. That'd be awesome. Well, this is a three hour show and I didn't want it to be three hours. And we're talking about the nitty gritty stuff because this is what hurts America. What people don't understand is they sit there and they go, oh, yeah, America, it's awesome. I'm like, America is awesome. But here's the thing. America has turned into a situation where the haves and the have nots and they're catering towards the have nots based on our political system and by who has the most money they're creating like the charter schools. They're creating situations that block out, let's call it the lower 70%. That's what it's seemingly what they're trying to do here. And so, yes, man-made construct, all of it. Barter trade system. Now we have people wanting to ban books. 
We don't want you to read books about history. I'm like, what the frick is going on? This is exactly why they're trying to control the school system. We don't want you to know about history. We don't want you to feel bad. We don't want you to know about what you're doing and how it happened to come to be now. We don't want you to know that because once you cut off how you don't know a person's 25, 30 years old, they just know how it is now. They don't know that it was a different way before and that it can be changed. So they're thinking, oh, this is the way it goes. We'll just go along with it. It's fine with us. It's not affecting me really, but in reality, it's affecting everybody because a rising tide lifts all boats. You don't poke holes in, we have 10 boats. We're not gonna poke, we're gonna poke holes in seven out of 10. Leave them, start driving off. They're fending for themselves. You come back years later, you're gonna find out, okay, some of them survived. When they survived, they came to shore. What did they have? Bricks, sticks, rocks, vegetation. The other people that drove off, they went back to their own lives and everything's fine. There's a systemic situation, right? It's not gonna be the same. So while you're poking holes in everything the other guys do on the island, meanwhile, the other guys over here living in the lap of luxury, you're sitting there like, clearly there's gonna be a problem. There's gonna be a difference. So you can't keep poking holes in the bottom 70% and expect things to end up fine. Sooner or later, the bottom 70% is going to wake up, you would hope, and be like, you know what? Uh, you're not getting no more of my money. No. I want you to tell me where this is going. There's no more of this just carte blanche tax cuts for these guys, 30-year tax breaks for this person. No, no, no. That's over. No, we need more uh, representation because we're getting taxed without representation right now. All right. Many people don't understand fractional banking and 0% loans or bonds given to the corporations. OCs don't benefit. Weaken crumbs while wealthy get full loaves. Exactly. Curtis Davis, Mr. Financial. Stop it, man. You're blowing up my mind tonight with all this, right? Come on, man. Stop talking about it. It's getting me upset again. It's getting me hyped, although that means I'm going to be making some videos. And this is also why we get no love here, because we talk about the real stuff here. There's rarely people. Let's put it this way. People talk about bad things are going to happen. People talk about, uh, you know, society and it has differences. We're talking about here, just like what he's writing here. This is what's actually happening. We can all do something about it, but most people don't realize all these things are happening underneath us. We don't realize they're making these backdoor deals. All we know is this money's coming out of our paycheck. Uh, this is how much we have to send the state. This is how much we pay in for our sales taxes, how much we have to, you, we know those numbers. It's just that we don't know where those tax papers and tax numbers are going. We don't know where it's going unless you start looking it up. And then once you start looking it up, you're like, wait a minute, I need a business. <laughs> I need a business. I need an LLC. I need a C Corp. I don't care. I need a business so I can get some tax write-offs so I can get in this same ball game that these guys are on. That's why everybody should have a business. Opus Virtual Office. I don't know if I have a link down below, but this is finance. You need a business or businesses because you need to get with the rest. Yes, Opus Virtual Office. That's how you have your, I've talked about this on every live stream lately. But if you don't want to, if you want to work from home, get Opus Virtual Office. They'll have your own phone number. Somebody will answer the phone for you. Have your own business line, a business phone number, a business office, a commercial address. So therefore, you'll be able to get funding, get loans. Um, you'll be officially a business more than a business out of your residence. All right. So there you go. Um, damn right. The amount of taxes I pay in Cali is ridiculous. Let's not even visit the free <laughs> exactly 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 so vanessa comigate knows she's paying uh she's in la so it's probably nine nine point five so imagine this ladies and gentlemen let's say everybody goes oh you make more money in cali okay stop with the nonsense they want you to believe that the average wage in cali is somewhere like 63 64k that's it it's not 100k 
It's not 150 K. It's like 63, $64,000 a year is the average wage in California, median wage in California. So imagine that you work at a job, you make 60, let, we'll just round down 60 K. And imagine you got to pay out of the 60 K, let's just say uh, 20, let's just say you got to pay $10,000 in tax. But then you live in the state of California and franchise tax board says, well, uh, you got to pay us like seven G's, $17,000 in taxes. Then you start realizing, wait a minute, you mean if I lived in Florida or Texas or Nevada, I don't have to pay that 7,000? That adds up every year. Plus, then you add in other things that I discussed earlier. Your car registration is also not 300, 400, 500 or more. It's $75, $100. You're like, wait a minute, what's going on? You're like, okay. Then you find out, wait, the gas, instead of paying $379, $399, it's $319, $299. Wait a minute. All this stuff starts adding up, and that's a built-in tax in the system. So you have an option to live in different states, but at the same time, you have different infrastructure. You have different ways of laws, the way laws are done. And uh, it's very, very interesting. But California, New York, Illinois, all these places, you pay higher taxes generally than other people. And you pay more for generally everything because things are taxed at a higher rate. So it's not just your personal tax. It's the overall tax. And we're trying to avoid that. So even if you live in California, you have to um, unfortunately get a business. <laughs> I'm just saying they charge more for an LLC, by the way, as well in California, which is a damn shame. It's not $130, $125, $200. It's like $800. All right. First off, when you sign up, it's cheap. But then you have an obligation like 800 a year. It's crazy. Um, crazy. Um, pay in Cali is ridiculous. Exactly. Labor. My ancestors gave this. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 This right here. This right here. Being a minority in America. See, this right here is the problem. This right here, labor ancestors gave this country was under slave, slavery or not, gave their work for this. So now we start talking about, now this is exactly what we were talking about earlier with Marrero. So he was saying, well, I feel a certain way because I actually had to pay for my, um, um, or something, not you, but not Marrero, but some people might have paid for their their kids' college and should they get reimbursed, things like that. See, this is that thing. This is that thing that goes deeper. So now are we cutting checks to the Asians? Are we ch cutting checks to the black people? Are we cutting checks to the Native Americans for all the slave labor working for free? But yet you're going to give other people free money to build up their community, build up their corporations. But yet you had a whole situation here where people work for free for not only four years or five years, hundreds of years. So now that's why people say we want some sort of restitution. And now, if you start saying you need restitution to give somebody their 10,000, 20,000 or whatever, then all of a sudden you're opening up the door for hell. You might as well start opening up the bank for all these people and stolen land as well. Just like in California, I believe it was somewhere around Mission Beach area where the black family got their, their land back. You're going to start giving me restitution for all that too? For the 40, 50, 120 acres that was stolen. I'm just saying we start opening up a can of worms over $10,000.
I agree. Bell and rich people out is not the answer. That's not, that's my point. You and I will end up with the final bill. Exactly. Everyone should be responsible for their debt. And I respect your opinion. Please respect mine. Yeah. Um, I respect your opinion because people do have that exact same opinion that you have with the school thing. Um, I just obviously have a different side of the coin on it because I, if I find it hard pressed that here it is 2022 and a uh, president says, and uh, well, one party says, Hey, I want to give up three. I believe it's 360 billion is what's allocated. Although extracting all 360 billion, that's another story. Cause you got to jump through hoops, but let's just say 360 billion is allocated. And I'm sitting there like, okay, I'll agree with you. You might not like it. You can like it, but then I don't agree with sitting idly by while everybody else is getting free money. And you're having to sit there and say, well, I don't care. I don't care they get subsidies. I don't care they get bailed out. I don't care about any of that. Now, if you do care, then that means you have to, there's only one thing you can do, either not pay it, which that'll be problems, or you have to vote accordingly. And see, there's where the problem is. So when a person votes and they're voting against one thing, but yet they're mad about another, I'm like, hold up. I'm voting straight up with anybody that sits here and tells me I'm going to tax the 1% for Wall Street, I'm down. I'm going to give these guys $360 billion to get their t uh, school taxes safe, uh, paid off, I'm down. I'm going to... um. I'm going to stop subsidies. Where's that politician at? I don't know. Nobody's ever said I'm going to stop subsidies, but I'm down other than Bernie probably said that. I'm down. So when you say I'm not going to give tax cuts and tax breaks, I'm down. So those type of things is what I'm talking about. It's one thing to have an opinion about something, but it's another when you start going, hey, this is how I'm actually, the only way I can do it in America is place your vote at the ballot for the people that say, hey, I don't want these guys to have tax breaks, tax cuts. I don't want these guys to get subsidies. This is a capitalist system. I don't want these guys to get bailouts. And granted, it's across the aisle. So it's, a, you know, one of those things. But all I'm trying to say is everybody has an opinion. But all I'm going to say is I am not going to be mad about $360 billion. I am going to be mad about a $3 trillion tax cut tax break. I am going to be mad about another $500 billion worth of EV tax credits. I am going to be mad about giving somebody 30 years worth of tax breaks. All that unnecessary. But I damn sure aren't going to be mad about giving a freaking $20,000 or $10,000 to some students who's getting railroaded because they can't get a job because their credit's not good because they haven't paid their student loans or can't get a loan to buy a house because their student loan isn't paid. That's BS. What I've come to understand that the good old USA is not always fair. Oh, Vanessa Comigate, always fair. That's an understatement. Diesel Mike is in the house. Welcome to the SSN Nation Wednesday night live stream. And he has the icon next to his name and he brings his tagline. Good evening, Eric and SSN family. Just listening the whole time while at work. All right. Yes. And by the way, if I offended you, Victor Moreau, I didn't mean to. I just get a little bit, but about uh, um, uh, things that happen in American society. It's not against you personally. If you, I don't want you to take it that way, because I don't want anybody to ever think that they can't uh, give a uh, uh, their opinion here. So I don't want it to mean that. All I'm saying is that I've always get I get a little bent when somebody has a views on money going into the coffers. Because $360 billion going for students, but we spend $770 billion on the military industrial complex that our grandkids are going to be paying for. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, and that's just one year, not over 10 years. That's one year. Next year, it's going to be another $700 billion. And the year after that, so over 10 years, we're going to pay $70 billion, right? Um, or whatever it comes out to trillions of dollars. All right. So um, all I'm going to say about it. Yeah. 770 billion is yeah. That's almost a trillion a year. So we're going to be paying almost $10 trillion. Um, three, 360, 10 trillion for the industrial complex, 4 billion, 
10 years is 40 billion to the Walton family, right? Um, 6 billion, 60 billion to the Walton family, 40 billion to oil industry. So we're talking 400 billion, 40 billion, 60 billion, that's 100 billion just for the Walton family and the oil. And then the airlines gets their whatever, 10 billion or whatever. So all I'm saying is, in the overall grand scheme of things, I'll gladly pay taxes for students to get smarter, better, brighter, and actually have a future. We're holding down. The, here's the thing with the school. I just got to say this again. The school thing, let's just say, I, I don't know how many people that even affects, but let's just say it's 10 million people. I don't know. So you have, let's, I'm not going to say all 10 million but let's just say you have 5 million of those people that can't go out and get a decent paying job because they do credit checks. I don't know if it's going to apply, but I'm pretty sure they do credit checks for jobs. They find out people that didn't pay their loan. They say, okay, you can't get the job. So now the person has a lower paying job. Then the person does have a paying job. They actually try and go out and get a FHA or maybe a VA loan or some sort of government loan, they find out they IOU on a on their debt for the student loan. All of a sudden they can't get the loan. So now they can't enter into the housing market. Now they got to be renters. I mean, there's more repercussions to this than when you give money to the Walton family, the Bezos family, the Musk family, and they don't have any repercussions. They don't it, nothing from it they don't have to pay it back they're not paying for the return of it but i am you are i'm paying for that and we get nothing out of it what we do get out of it from students is a better person hopefully we get a person that's uh educated we get them in the workforce and now they have high paying jobs which now gets high paying taxes so all i'm saying is there's an ecosystem versus me bailing out a bank we don't benefit from that zero benefits i mean that's my thing i'm like i'm looking at benefits so that's why I, so again we do have a different point of view on this school situation as many other points of views i'm sure but the point is i don't mean to be uh taking it against you or anything like that so i want to reiterate because i love when people have their opinions because that gives us a time to discuss it other people so don't, i wasn't on him i was just on this idea that we we can't help people and we're helping 3,000 people like it's no problem. That's my thing. 3,000. Okay, there's less than 3,000 billion. I mean, uh, less than 4,000 billionaires. All right? On the planet. All billionaires don't live in the United States. But those billionaires that own companies in the United States, we're giving them billions of dollars every year. That's the, that's the weirdest thing to me. But you're not going to help out the guy over here that makes forty thousand dollars a year but you're going to help out the dude that has billions of dollars already you're going to give him more billions that's where there's a disconnect for me and so uh, everybody has their point of views i appreciate that so don't want anybody not to leave their opinions i'm not on you all right i just giving you my opinion uh he has every right to have his opinion and it's fair enough but it's just a discussion all right so just want to put that out there all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's three hours, 13 minutes. Smash the like button. And if you like what we're talking about, please subscribe to the channel. Click the all notification bell. This is a this is one of the good ones. I love talking about financials. All right. It's all good, buddy. I totally understand where you're coming from. We can disagree and respect each other's opinion. Exactly. Trust me, I have bigger things to worry about. Exactly. We all do. You got that right. You got that right. We're not worrying about the 360 billion. That's for sure um but uh, it's always good for discussion all right ladies and gentlemen we're gonna wrap this up tonight and um it was a sterling uh conversation as far as i'm concerned i appreciate everybody's input and once again make sure you protect yourself down below in the description i haven't talked about it much but you guys know the standard bearers are there we have a way to do group group economics with debt uh, box uh debt node debt box node which is a node that earns rewards daily. We also have um, the IX Global, which you can buy the node yourself. They start at 1250 
Well, 4,500 is the most expensive, 2,500, 1,500, 1,250. You can go do it yourself and earn the rewards all by yourself or enter into our group economics. That's down below. That's because you're going to need finance. And as we kind of established, if you can get some extra money coming in while you're sleeping and it happens to be crypto, I think we're in the right direction for if there's a meltdown, we still would be earning rewards, I would hope, because that meltdown would mean the Internet would have to be yanked from around the world. And that's not going to happen. Countries need that. So there might be disruption if there's electricity and power outages, but your node would still be earning rewards based on the network. So that would be very, very interesting. Also, that ecosystem has NFT still haven't performed properly. Maybe they will one day. But the one with debt box node is backed by commodities that will forever be around. We'll always be needing the oil, the water, the natural gas. The gold, you always need that. The scan system in the satellite, that's going to be needed, especially when it costs you an arm and a leg to dig holes that come up empty. And you can efficiently find all these natural resources underground from the satellite. Now that's a big time. That's going to be around forever. Because even if the United States doesn't need it, China needs it. If China and U.S. don't need it, Russia needs it. Russia doesn't need it. Okay, France needs it. France doesn't need it. Okay, Spain's going to need it. Okay, Italy needs it. Okay, Africa nations need it. Okay, South American countries need it. Mexico needs it. So it's like this is opening up a whole can of worms for additional cash flow. So if you have nodes in that environment, I think that's a winner. Uh, Victor Morrell, he mentioned Hector. Hector, even last year, they had their ecosystem. They're putting steps in place. That's very interesting. Their, their coin price now is $9.78, a far cry from $300. All right. So is this the bottom? We don't know. But I do like this. All right. We're going to take a brief break. We're going to end this. We'll talk about anything else because I've already been here three hours. I was trying to do short time all week so I can get a little bit more sleep in. But this has been one that I love talking about. I love talking about economics. I love talking about socioeconomics. I love talking about the past and what happened in the past actually has something to do with our current state. And things can get worse. So the meltdown has begun because... Keep in mind, again, if the stock market melts down, that is invested in by not only the top 10 percent of the wealthiest in America, it's the top 10 percent in the world investing in the United States stock market, real estate markets. All right. So there's countries that rely on the income from Americans or America. So therefore, if you have real estate going down, you have stock market going down and crypto is worldwide and has been going down, this is a trifecta of assets that could stay down and people are losing money because if they need the money and need the cash out, they can't without taking an L. So therein lies the problem. And as soon as you have other people dumping or giving back their properties, and now these companies are going to be like, whoa, we can't let this property sit here. We're going to have to sell it cheap, fast as possible. Then prices start dropping even further. And when we start talking about crypto, crypto is being manipulated by the big boys. They got their hands all in it. They don't want you taking money off the stock market and putting it into crypto without their hands in that. So they've done it. They are owning exchanges now. That's the next natural move. Because the natural move that they tried at first, which they did, was buy crypto unbeknownst to you, they were buying crypto. But then they realized, hold on, we can actually be almost like the bank if we own an exchange. So it was just a matter of time before the big boys started trying to buy exchanges. Because then they have, they could potentially have hundreds of millions of dollars on the exchange, just sitting there for them to borrow against, use at their discretion, do whatever they want, just like a bank. And so they know it's going to be regulated eventually. That's the only reason they're in it. And guess who gets to regulate it? Those same 
guys that are in there, like the Wall Street guys. They're the ones that draft everything for the senators and the Congress people, right? So you have to understand this ecosystem we have is all based on the top 10 percenters, top one percenters, and they're writing these laws to benefit them. They weren't going to write the laws earlier because they didn't have exchanges. They weren't in crypto that much because you know what would have happened. The crypto guys would have done like Celsius tried to do, except Celsius ended up being a bad guy. They were loaning. They were getting loans against this to get returned. So it blew up. That wasn't supposed to be happening, but they did it. They were regulated. So these guys, they know if you were to regulate the industry earlier, they wouldn't have had their toes in the water enough. So you got to think logically. That's why they're letting it slide this whole time in most jurisdictions other than New York. They're like, oh, no. Um, and a few other states like California, you want to do something, you got to get you know regulated there. But all I'm saying is they had to figure out where the point is that they can control. Because remember, you're on an exchange, just like the stock market. You're relying on a free market. You're believing that the coin price or token price is this much. The same thing they're doing on the stock market is what they're going to do with the exchanges. They're going to actually pump up the uh, prices when they want to on certain tokens or coins. They're going to pick winners, just what they do on the stock market. So now that's going to be a manipulated asset. And so now we're going to be in a, a problem. We're going to have a problem. Everything's going to be manipulated. So you're going to start having real estate is owned. 15% of all real estate right now without the new builders uh, is investors or Wall Street. So if that number gets up to 40%, which could happen because they get the free money, remember, um, that would be very, very bad because then they're going to turn us into a renter nation and 50, if they get to 40 or 50%, there's a tipping point. I haven't never calculated it, but I'm just guessing off the top of my head, 40, 50, 40%, 40 I would believe would do it. If they get to that number, then that means they can manipulate other prices. That means they can buy and sell amongst themselves to create a market. And you wouldn't know nothing about it. Just like they swap money in the back office, borrow against each other that banks do that you don't know nothing about, they could be doing those same similar type things. They're like, hey man, I'm gonna, we're gonna buy this house from you because we got some free money sitting here. We're gonna raise the price up a hundred thousand. So so all all those, you know, 200 homes we own, they all just went up $200,000 each. And then we're gonna borrow against that equity and buy some more. So that changes the whole game. It's easy to manipulate at that point. Right now, they can't really do it at 15%, but I think the number probably is going to be somewhere around 40, and then all hell's going to break loose. That's why we need to buy the homes, ladies and gentlemen. All right? We need to do that. All right? We have to think in unconventional ways of generating income fast. That's right. Building a business, real estate, investments, crypto, the old thinking of I have a secure job is false. 100%. 100%. And what's even worse is what you brought up earlier about the pensions. There's people that are retiring right now in California, in Tennessee, in Kentucky, all these places. And they are sitting there thinking they are good. Because remember, in a lot of these places, you can retire at 20, 30 years, you are fully vested. And it's just a matter of if you have to be 62, 65, 67, or whatever number it is. Um, which is 62, you can sit there and say, hey, I, I think I want to start taking out some money. So these people might find themselves short. There's been pensions where people were like, hey, we got to we'll, we'll pay you early because we can't pay you out over this long term because you get a bump every year. Cost of living increase. So how about if we just pay you two hundred thousand dollars right now? And people are taking the early exit. And then some people don't get that option. They're just like, I'm sorry, we can't fund this. So sad, too bad. And uh, we're going there. We're going there. It's already happening. A job is not safe. It's safe. This, this was 1940. Well, 
50, 60, 70, 80, when, well, the 80s is when things change. But up until that point, it was basically capitalist system, all good. 80s, we have a president that talked this trickle down theory, tax cut, tax breaks for the rich. They're going to trickle money down somehow instead of buying yachts and planes and automobiles. I, I don't know how that trickle down works. But you as a taxpayer are going to pay their share because we're sending money to them for free and you're going to pay for it, taxpayers. That was the beginning of the end, ladies and gentlemen, because now they are getting money from our backs. And they don't have to pay it back oftentimes. So we're footing the bill on top of paying our normal taxes. We're still footing the bill over time. So our kids. So if you were born in 1970, had kids in 1990, your kids now are 25. They are uh, paying taxes. Right. On a deficit that's 33, 35 or more trillions in deficit, you're paying it. They're paying it, and your great grandkid is going to be paying it too. So um, they're stretching it out over time, but we have less people in the workforce, not more. So now you have to understand why some groups of people are trying to get more a, a bigger population, right? But they don't want the population to be from outside of the United States. So what do you do if you want to have bigger populations? You do some radical stuff. I'm not going to say what that radical stuff is because it speaks for itself. You start doing radical stuff, making women have kids. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? All right. I'm going to end it tonight because I can keep going on and on. I thought about making a channel about this. It's just that if I did, it would be kind of wild. <laughs> It'd be kind of wild. Um, but... I just want to let you know all of this together has to do with your financial outlook and what your options are going to be. And this is why one day we talked about it earlier. You can walk into your bank and they say, I'm sorry, you can't take out any money. You can walk in and try to withdraw from your uh, um, 401k. Um, and they say, I'm sorry, we don't allow that. Or we're going to have a 30 percent <laughs> fee to block you, you know, something crazy. Um, you could find yourself going down with your brokerage account over wherever. And all of a sudden they say, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't do nothing with this. You can't sell the shares. You can't withdraw. All right. That's a, all this stuff is already happening. So you have to keep in mind what your last bastion is. One is crypto. All right. The second one that I damn, it's three hours and 30 minutes in and I didn't even mention it. Um, unstoppable domain. It's only twenty dollars to get a dot crypto domain. You need that just to be safe. The reason why I call it safe is the Internet could get wiggy. Right. We have overseers. You could be turned off, canceled YouTube channel that we talked about tonight. Things I talked about, they can say, ah, we're canceling this channel. The reason why you get dot crypto is because you can receive crypto and yeah i lost my mic for a second yeah you can also unstoppable domain you can also put websites on that so therefore, it's on the blockchain. So there, that means nobody can block your website. So remember when there's a guy named Andrew Tate. Mouth getting dry. Hold on. There's this guy on YouTube or, or in, in, on social media, Andrew Tate. And apparently he got blocked by a lot of social media platforms apparently i don't know if it's true but that's what i've seen some people talking about it on these uh, youtube streets and i was like that's weird but here's the other thing if he would have had his platform at his dot crypto or dot nft and it was on the blockchain they couldn't have done anything about it so 
this is why you have to set yourself up financially. There's different ways you can do it. But think about guns, grub, finance, and the different ways of finance, because this isn't easy. The United States government has deals with most of the developed world. And if they want to grab a United States citizen's money out of the bank account in another country, they can do it. They already have the agreement. There's only a few countries. There's no agreement like that. So again, one other thing though is um, I still recommend whenever you go outside of the country, you should still open up a bank account regardless. Even if the U.S. can do something, that doesn't mean they still have to go through steps to make it happen. Like they had to call up and say, hey, I need to know who uh, your U.S. Um, banking, who U.S. citizens who bank there. I need their info. I need to know who they are, not their info, but who they are. The bank will probably, if they're in agreement, they'll send them the info um, if they've already signed up. But if they didn't, they say, I'm sorry, that's not going to work. So all I'm saying is either way, you should still have other bank accounts offshore than onshore. All right. So that's one of your finance moves you need to make. The other finance move you need to make, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because crypto is what it is right now. It's not regulated still. It's still the Wild West. But unfortunately, you have to take a chance. High risk, high rewards is what crypto is about. So if you found something that can earn you some rewards, earn you some extra interest, earn you something, it's all high risk. But only use money that you can afford to lose when you're doing these high risk projects, because if they stay around a long time, then it's that little bit you put in will be a lot later. So therefore, that's why I suggest you put in a little, let it ride, do whatever, but only what you can afford to lose. Never put in more than what you can not afford to lose, all right? I got to be specific. We have some things going on, like we have my Z-Tron bot. I even had a video about it yesterday. I'm not withdrawing anything out of it, but now I started checking, and hey, wait a minute, is anybody withdrawing out of here? People are withdrawing, but they said, oh, it's manual now. And we had to wait a week or we had to wait two weeks or we still haven't gotten it. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute now. This is why you have to be very careful. Sometimes things have worked for 500 days. In this case, 500, well, they're at 590 plus days. For 500 and they changed things about a month ago. So 560 days or 550 Things went a certain way. They changed things. All of a sudden, there's glitches, allegedly. People aren't getting their uh, withdrawals, apparently. Now, I didn't know this when I dropped this video. I didn't know it because I started realizing. I was like, wait a minute. Let me check on these guys a little bit more because nobody's talking about they're taking out thousands of dollars per day anymore or, you know, taking out 300 a day. I'm just like, what's going on? So now I'm seeing rumors of, well, they changed everything. They went to manual. It's taken more than seven days. I'm like, okay, I'm not liking that. So that's why now I have to reiterate, only put in what you can afford to lose in any investment, even if it's the stock market. Because we saw what happened with Celsius. Celsius was talking all this big noise for a year, although they wouldn't come here in the nation. You know, we tried to get him. We tried to get uh, Alex here. I tried to get his uh, his right hand man. He said he was coming. And then I guess he probably checked the channel. It's like, oh, wait a minute. He didn't send me over any questions. <laughs> it's live. People can ask questions in the chat room. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know if we're going to be ready for this. Um, so they didn't want to come to the nation. Um, neither one. They said they would. Alex said, oh, no, talk to this dude. Then I told Alex, I said, hey, man. He didn't, uh, he, he, he faked. Why don't you come on? And he never wanted to come on. So um, he always wanted that somebody else to come on for him and then they wouldn't come on. You guys didn't know all this was going on in the background. So anyhow, that's why you just never know what's happening. Cause the whole time uh, Machinsky was saying, everything's safe, everything's good. We're regulated. You don't have to worry about it. I did it. And the next thing you know, oh wait, you guys were leveraged. Wait a minute. You got to file bankruptcy. What, what's happening here? What's we? Whoa. What's going on? You said you were all good. Never had to worry about those uh, people's money and all this. What's happening here? So all I'm saying is with crypto, you never know what's going to happen. 
You can only go with your guts, your research, and what you find out, that's all you can go by. So you take these small risks and all we need is, well, like Mark Cuban always says, one, that's all we need is one, right? Um, but unfortunately, it might take us 10 to 15 times to find the one, all right? Because we've all been in four or five, I've been in five or six different projects, all went to zero, right? No matter what the best intents was, it all looked good. But at the bottom line is the companies weren't able to proceed and do what they needed to do. So, again, just be careful out there, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Links are down below in the description. So please check those out. Get your free stocks from Robin Hood and Weeble if you haven't already. Just want to share the Goldman Sachs online savings account is now offering 1.9. APY. This is just an option if you don't want to take any risk with your money. Uh, yeah, Victor Morero, good point. Good point on that. But how do you think about this, Morero? Um, I made, I did the video. Uh, it was, was it? I can't remember. I did. I've been doing the stop struggling now. Number one, two, three, and up to number four. I can't remember the order and sequence. But one of the videos I was actually talking about. Oh, it was number three. Number three, where I was talking about safe, money safe, Victor Morero, the bond, the one-year bond is 3.9, 4%, like 3.94, 3. Point whatever, right? So that's where if you go safe, I'd go with one-year bond. You got that almost 4%. And after a week from now, it probably is going to be 4%. So 4%, even though that doesn't get you the inflation number, but at least it's one year and I can live with that as a safe haven. And Goldman Sachs, um, I have no problem with that because Goldman Sachs is big boy, big boy feds. And if you start dealing with Goldman Sachs, you ultimately get other benefits down the line once you keep having uh, money deposited there. So I have no problem with dealing with Goldman Sachs um they're part of the they're not only part of the banking system they're part of the federal government a lot of people don't understand history of goldman sachs what if you knew in fact i think bezos worked at goldman sachs yeah that's right bezos worked at goldman sachs um what if you knew that most of the treasury secretaries come out of or through goldman sachs now you understand why they have preferential treatment for the banks on wall street so isn't that very interesting? They're not picking somebody that came out of uh, some other place. And Goldman Sachs only generally hires from certain schools. So when I don't know which one it is, but it, it could be Harvard. It, it could be any one of those Ivy League schools, but it's one of those. It's either Harvard and I can't think of the other school. But that's generally where they hire most of their people, not all, most. So it's very, very interesting. Yale, Harvard. Um, and then they are appointed to positions in the government. And so that is a very interesting scenario when you think about it. So there you go. Uh, bonds are definitely a good option. If you're okay, locking up your money, a 12 month lock is not that bad. Exactly. That's what I was thinking, Marrero, 12 months, because you don't want to do 10 years, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to do five years. And so what I'll do here is uh, in case people are interested in that, I'll just show you, all you have to do is go to like, CNBC, for instance, and uh, go, uh, let me see if they, uh, they'll have bonds somewhere probably. Let me see if they have it. Let's go look at this. Let's see if we get um, pre-market uh, bonds. Here we go. So we'll get into the bond market and let's see where we go with this. U.S. Treasuries. I'm, I'm waiting for this to say four, unchanged. It hasn't changed, even though it went up plus. So we're at 3.94 for one year, ladies and gentlemen. And not bad is also, Marrero, check this out. 3.8 is for six months, which is, which is interesting. Very interesting when you really, really think about it, um, we can do something with this. <laughs> I 
I won't get into the bond markets. We've never talked about bonds, but there's something you can do with this now that these are that close. And this could actually be over four. Both of these could be over four. But anything past one year, I would not. I, I don't think it's a good idea, quite frankly, because we don't know what the outcomes are going to be. And plus the fact, I believe these bond numbers are going to be higher over the next three months. So some of these might be in the four, two of these might be in the fours, whether it's the six month or the one year, they could be in the fours by the end of the year, beginning of January. So this would be a safe haven spot. And this is gonna be a safe haven spot for the rest of the world. And this is how the United States gets to come out of their treacherous ways because they will be able to get money outside of the, from international communities once they get into this four, 4.5 percent range which is what should happen and then people in europe and around the world who are getting zero percent or one percent they're going to say hey man let's get some of them u.s bonds um for six months or a year hell yeah where do we get that so they'll have trillions of dollars coming in from around the world that's another reason why the feds have no choice but to keep raising interest rates the bond market's going to follow all right. So just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. And that means buy our house in nine. If I keep saying 1900s, 2023. And then today I listened to some real estate experts, realtors, and they were claiming that wait till 2024. How about that? I'm saying I'm looking at 40 percent off before the end of next year. I'm like. By the, if, if they're waiting for 2024, that would mean the housing market collapsed. In other words, if medium home price is 500,000, I'm talking homes would be $100,000. That's what, if, if it's 2024, that's what would happen. There's no way it's gonna be 2024. We're gonna be able to have 40, 50% off homes in 2023. All right, so stack up. Save your cash, get into crypto, protect yourself with the foods, the beans, the rice, the water, enough. And some people who just showed up, I want to show you this once again, because you missed this information. Just so in case you never understood how long you could live without water, food, things like that. Let me show you. Where is it? Uh-oh. It moved on me. Oh, I know what happened. Okay, here we go. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. We know the oxygen situation. Can't live long without oxygen, only a few minutes. Um, three days without water, although some people may be able to go four, but your body's gonna start shutting down using some, some, of, your, um, uh, some of your body parts are gonna shut down. So that's how it works. Three hours without shelter. They're talking about like if it's cold out, like it's about to get cold and like, you know, um, what is it? 30 states is going to have cold weather and they're going to be under 30 degrees and three hours without having some sort of shelter. You'll have uh, some sort of um, snow bite, freeze bite, whatever you want to call it. Three weeks without food, people fast. So three weeks without food, that's a problem. So again, this is why you need four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks worth of even if it's beans and rice. It doesn't matter. Get yourself that and along with stacks of water. All right. Because then you can you can do live a long time and then you start taking out these pieces. Right. You add in things like, OK, make sure if you're going to use a gas grill, make sure you have propane. If you're going to use one of these other stove tops that have allows you to tap into the propane, use that. But you got to get yourself set up. Generators are going to use gas. If there's no gas, which there will be gas. If there's no gas, then you have to think, what, am, what can I use? So think about all these things and then just go out. You don't even have to buy them new. Just go out to a flea market or something. They have all this stuff sitting around because people are like, ah, I'll never use this. And you can buy it cheap. So just think about that, all right? So I want you guys to be prepared. This is Stop Struggling Now. We can't talk about making money all the time. 
because it's not about making money all the time. Money at some point may not save you because you might not be able to buy anything. So then what? If you can't go get it and can't buy it, now you have a problem. So you need money later after you come out of it, but you're eventually going to need money because stores and all that will come back to life if we went to a Armageddon situation. Um, we don't want to go Mad Max like, but if we come back where we have a bad economy, things go down like it's the Great Depression and um, money is, you know, thrown away, then we're going to have problems. So you want to make sure you are going, OK, I have crypto. That's cool. Crypto may be worthless, but nonetheless, it may be able to buy something, too. So I'm just saying, just be ready, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for your input tonight. Three hours, 45 minutes, way, way longer than I wanted. But catch us on Friday night at 9, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today, I was walking around and I was like, you know what? I do all these live streams and I get off and it's like 12 midnight or it's like 9, 45, 10 a.m., 10 p.m. I'm waking up way late. Why don't I have a live stream earlier in the day? That's what I was thinking. What do you guys think? I mean, something like 5 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Eastern. What about earlier in the day? Maybe I'll add in one per week on an off day, like a Tuesday or something. Or maybe on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or one of the Mondays, or maybe a Wednesday. Because then Wednesday is a members only chat late night. Maybe I'll have an, a live stream open to everybody in the daytime. How about that? Well, I don't know what day, but anyhow, what do you guys think about it? Or a weekend live stream, you know, just like a 30 minute live stream, just something short, 30, 45 minutes, nothing major. Let me know what you guys think. Anybody have any uh, things about that? And by the way, Victor Marrero put this down here. I'm going to reiterate bonds. Bonds, ladies and gentlemen, they are rising. They're no longer 2.8 or 3. They're closer to 4%. Now, one year or six months, that's not a bad gig if you can get 4%. It could be over 4% by the end of the year. So keep that on your radar. All right? U.S. Treasury bonds, not some other country. All right? Just saying. All right. We're out. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates and share the videos. All right? We need more shares. We need more likes. We need more love because the things we talk about, they don't like putting it out there on these YouTube streets. And so watch out for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support over all these years. It's four years I've been on here and I appreciate your support. Members with the icons, thank you so much for your support every month. I appreciate that greatly. And if there's ever any subject matter you guys want to talk about that I haven't covered, please send me an email or just drop me a dime in the comment section. Either way, just let me know and we'll get to it. All right. You know, I'm here for you guys. And that's the whole point of uh, doing this channel. And that's why I do it. It's not for any other reason in reality. All right. Yeah, we get to make a little bit of extra money, but that's kibbles and bits, quite frankly. The time we spend, even the well, let's see, three hours, 40, well, almost four hours this time, three or four hours, two hours on Monday, another probably two hours at least on Friday. That's 10 hours a week on that, plus videos or 20, 30 minutes editing and all that. So when you add up all this stuff, it takes a little time. So therefore, the time doesn't equate to monetary value, but the time gets to the appreciation value that I have for you guys being here. And I'm hoping I'm sharing some things that can help out everybody, not just a segment of the population, but everybody can utilize some of this information. All right. So with all that said, you know, the situation as you're walking along out here, trying to make things happen, keep your head up, keep moving and I'm out.